Yeah. Hey guys, welcome to Jerry's Live. As always, I'm your host, Amy Gardner Dean. We are at episode 80, which you know, ironically, I looked back at Jimmy. Yeah. This is Jimmy Leslie, by the way. Hey, Jimmy's our guest today. He is the resident artist of Coal Art. Yes. And he is also the director of the uh, Fine Art Collective. I blanked yes. there for our, a minute. That's okay, our education yes. program. Yeah. But if you watched last year, you saw you came on with the CAD Free Colors from yes. Liquitex. So it's been actually 40 episodes since last oh, time. okay. So it's ironic that yeah. we kind of split right there. I'm with just you. happy I got invited back. I know. It's well, like yeah. if you don't get invited to a party a second time, you're like, what did well, I do wrong? <laughs> so so with, we've got uh, Celia Buchanan from Marabou. Uh -huh. She, I think, over, must have found out that I was saying that somebody needed to be the Alec Baldwin of the show and like oh, keep, keep coming back to help host episodes. <laughs> so she like kind of took that seriously, yeah. and I think she's been back for three She's been three now. Yes. But but you'll catch up by the uh, end of I this year. You. Yes. So. Okay, good. Uh, <laughs> but he, Jimmy's going to be talking about drying oils and mediums mm -hmm. with us here in a moment. Um, so we've got a lot of really awesome stuff to cover. Nobody, I think, could present this better and would just make sense of... This is a, very confusing to people. It is, um, yeah. O oil painting is, is uh, confusing, I think. Um, any of you out there who have worked with uh, watercolor, I mean, that, that's something we all work with as, yes. a, as a little kid. Um, you, you get a little set in kindergarten, first grade, or whatever, you've got your brush, your pans, mm -hmm. and easy cleanup. Right. Um, right. It's not the easiest medium we find later on when we're adults and we really try to do some beautiful things with watercolor. Right. Yes. But you don't have disastrous results for the most part right. in terms of right, it right, right. technically working. Exactly. You might have disastrous results in the image you get with watercolor right. if you're, you know, before yes. you're trained. Um, and then I think acrylics, they want to stick to almost any surface. I feel like you, you almost have to work to mess up acrylics. You just have to really thin them down with water, I right. think. When you're, you know, and, and we've talked about that on the shows multiple times, but I think people can see when that starts coming apart. Yes. Um, kind of where it just isn't as cohesive and it starts getting a little bubbly and too thin and exactly. I, I think there's kind of that line that you can see happening with acrylics where you're kind of like whoa I need to dial it back and, back and not thin yeah it. but oils yeah so so let's let's do this Amy I, I think for all of you out there I, uh, to me the most important thing in educating somebody is to not assume anything yes so I'm not gonna assume that you have any knowledge uh, here with uh, oils and let's just for a brief <clears throat> moment step back and say okay what are we talking about when we talk about oil paint what is it so we've got a binder, think of that as your glue, mm -hmm. your, your thing that sticks the, the painting down. So I've got a few things that are not oil here to just kind of help us I illustrate that. that. So we've got Winsor & Newton Gloss Gel. Um, gloss Gel, it's an acrylic polymer. This would be our binder in acrylic paint. Right. It could be a matte version. Right. Um, it could be, uh, instead of a gel, it could be fluid. Mm -hmm. um, it could be any variety of it, but it's an acrylic polymer. So that, if I put that out, it's very, let's see, Amy, it's almost like uh, <laughs> slime when you were a kid. If I date myself a little bit there, do you remember that it's, gooey it's, stuff? It's like that, slightly yeah. wetter than, remember paste in a jar with that? Yeah. That's what it reminds me of. So it's that's like, a gel consistency. Mm -hmm. If we took that, and here we've got our uh, we've got ultramarine blue pigment, mm -hmm. right? Beautiful pigment, which actually comes from a of lapis. Isn't that a gorgeous oh, stone? Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, really, really pretty stone. So if we took that, and we'll take a little bit of this uh, pigment, and I'm going to wipe off my palette knife, and I'm going to take just a little bit of that in here, and if we began to mix that together, we wouldn't really have paint right away. Um, you know, it would help to use a muller, mm -hmm. right? A glass muller that's got a, a, a ground surface to it and a grinding slab. Because you can see how gritty that is right there. Right. But rudimentary speaking, though. Right. Right? We're getting paint. You're, you're making a very rough version of paint. A yes, very ladies. rough version of paint. Oh, we got to pull it forward. Just oh, yeah, a let's pull bit. it forward. Make sure everybody can see things out there. There we go. So we could do that, and that pigment acts as our colorant comes from that stone and we use an acrylic polymer as a binder and that's going to glue that to the surface right if we had gum arabic which is our binder in 
watercolor. Mm -hmm. Kind of looks almost like amber. It does, very right? Much really, so. really pretty. Um, it is a a, a put resin. Down here, so see put it here. Here. It might be easier. Yeah, to there see. we go. It's a resin from an acacia tree, and it acts as a glue. And and actually, Amy, if I have, uh, I'm just gonna. You know, I'm going to reach over and I'm going to take my tea for a second that I have over here because I don't have water. We're not doing a water-based episode, uh, but I'm going to use the the uh, water from the tea right there and just stick that on here to the gum arabic. And you can just see how much of a binder that is. Wow. Right. So that, along with that same colorant, that same pigment that we had before, would act as the binder mm -hmm. for watercolor. And you would see it here gum arabic in its uh, fluid form mm -hmm. right here okay so now when we get to and you can actually see <laughs> i have to be careful because i could, gonna have this stuck to his hand well i could shake to a point where all of a sudden it flies off and hits right. somebody and i don't want to do that but very carefully it can come off and that acts as our binder so when we're talking about um when we're talking about oil paint we're generally speaking and we're talking about linseed oil right could be other drying oils as well and we'll get into that a little bit uh, but that's going to be the vehicle the thing that moves our paint mm -hmm. it's going to be the thing that also glues our paint to its mm -hmm. surface so the best way to start this episode really and and i would venture to say almost i don't want to say the most important thing but almost one of the most important things you can keep in mind right now this is an example of what happens with oil paint if it is thin too much yes. with solvent so I have a tremendous amount of solvent, and what it's done here is it's made the paint separate. Right. Looks very dull. Yep. Right. We generally think of oil paint as being quite glossy. This looks very dull. You can see cracking in here. Yep. You can see sort of little rivulets where where the the what, what's happened here. And actually, the best way to illustrate this, I'm going to take this paper towel. Look what happens. Mm -hmm. If we I do we, that, we actually did this with one of my college pieces that had been spray varnished oh. to prove the point of that not every just because you teach doesn't mean necessarily that you're using the proper protocol absolutely right? and and actually took one of my paintings because my professor was mineral spirits so yes. I got everything yes and we I went yeah rubbed out part of the painting yeah so you can see that right yep. there there's color mm -hmm. coming off there absolutely what you don't want to do and, and I say that this is super super important because often I, I was a college professor for many years mm -hmm. And one of the things I would see students do is they would thin their paint down yes. so much to begin a painting. Yes. So do not thin your oil paint to the consistency of watercolor. Right. All right, big thing there. We're going to get to the ratios you do want to use with solvent and right. oil shortly. But let's look at the opposite. So this is stand oil. A stand oil is a linseed oil. We'll, we'll get to specifically mm -hmm. what that means shortly because we're going to look at a, a, a whole lineup of drying oils and, and what they mean and what their characteristics are. But this is, in this case, only solvent. Right. In this case, only oil. Right. And a lot of it. And now you see the opposite. Instead of the paint spreading apart mm -hmm. in the first example and being very dull, beautiful gloss to it. Right. Wonderful. But it's risen up off the surface. And Amy, if you feel that. Oh, yeah. You can, you can just see tacky. that. It's, oh, my. Yeah. That's still oh, tacky. you can't. That, that, you that. guys can't hear it with a thing, but I, it, yeah. it goes. Yeah, that almost. Yeah a little of that on there but that almost sticks that yeah, yeah. that sticks to my hand yeah this I, I did this example probably six weeks ago oh my yeah. gosh so it's staying perpetually tacky and what's happening is that paint is now instead of coming apart it's coming up off the surface right that means wherever it's sticking up like that it's not touching the surface so it's not being held down really there either so okay. either one of these would not be a great foundation for right. a painting at all so and, and let's take a look also here, uh, just two examples of the, of, uh, the drying oils um, that we're going to look at later on. Actually, here, I want to look at these. Safflower, mm -hmm. right? So safflower seed, very, very pale. Put a few of these out right here, right? That's going to give us a very, very pale oil. Uh, flax seed, which is what linseed comes from. And flax seed, you might have in a high fiber diet as well. Right, flax meal that's darker which gives us the more yellow mm -hmm. uh, linseed oil we're going to take a look at that so let's do that all together Amy if you could kind of move that out of the sure. way I'm going to move this that's right back here yep and what we're going to do are yeah, we, we going to need this again? Uh, no okay. Amy I'm that's that's, right that's good at the moment yeah. what we're going to do right now is we're going to move this board over Amy and we're going to give everybody a look at seven different drying oils here now cold press linseed oil 
this is this is pretty standard. A lot of times what you'll see in oil paint, you look at the back of a tube and you'll see this says linseed oil right mm -hmm. on here. So that's usually cold pressed linseed oil. Right. Oftentimes we make oil paint with cold pressed linseed oil because it, it really wets the pigments very, mm -hmm. very well. Um, and you want to have all your pigments wet, all coated, because imagine if, if you were trying to glue something down right, right, and right. the glue wasn't all over that thing right. you were trying to glue down, it wouldn't right. really hold it well. So cold pressed linseed oil really wets pigment very, very well. So we're going to kind of start with that. We're just going to pour a little bit of it out at the top right here. Pretty fluid. Almost looks like uh, olive oil. Very much so. Right, very much like, so. Like the virgin oil, yep. cold pressed. Yep, yep. very much oil. so. Mm -hmm. um, sort of has that consistency. We're going to see that consistency a little bit more in a minute. So that's sort of middle of the road. If you look at fastest to slowest drying rates of oil paint, we could generally say that earth colors, things like yes. burnt sienna, yellow ochre, uh, umber, all those earth colors mm -hmm. tend to dry the quickest of your oil paints now, out of the tube. this is due to pigment actually correct yes the grind of the pigment yeah with those. yeah absolutely absolutely because a few things happen different pigments need mm -hmm. different amounts of oil right to have that painted right, right, that, right. the consistency that you want an oil paint to have um, so you don't need as much oil in here compared to the ratio of pigment to get paint so they'll tend to dry faster and when we look at oil paint drying rate overall mm -hmm. we're talking about two days to 14 days dry to the touch. Right. Now, when we get into varnishing. And, and that's without any mediums or anything. That's just if you're you're painting a relatively yep. I take this. normal swatch of, okay. Yeah, and you bring up a good point because I'll put uh, stuff like cadmium's cobalts mm -hmm. here uh, in the middle. Uh, so around two days or so mm -hmm. for earth colors, around five days or so, mm -hmm. cadmium's cobalts. If we take colors like alizarin, uh, quinacridones, uh, phthalo blues tend to be seven days or, or longer. Which, which this is why people are always like, why do they use uh, burnt umber or burnt sienna to prime your, to, to put a ground on your canvas? Sure. That's because it dries quickly. Yeah, yeah, you tend to use that maybe terra vert uh, right. would be yes. another color, beautiful mm -hmm. green earth color. And the thing about this, what, here's, here's what I would suggest to all of you, um, because I, I can't go into all of you know, 119 yeah, yeah. Windsor and Newton colors right now and talk about each drying yeah, we, rate, we would... We'd make Katie crazy. We, that, that would be boring. <laughs> uh, what I would suggest you do is whatever your palette is at home, you're, you're probably using 9, 10, 12 colors is about average what people might use in a palette. My suggestion to you is tomorrow, next time in your studio, don't make it a big, you know, uh, a, a big to-do about it. Just as you're prepping everything and putting out your paints, put out a little swatch. I would do a thin swatch. I would do a thick swatch of each color on a canvas board mm -hmm. or on a canvas. Make a note, what's the temperature in your studio? Mm -hmm. uh, because all of this has to do with your, your atmosphere right. in your studio, how thick or thin you right. put the color down. Um, so if you put a little thick and thin swatch, make a note of the temperature. If you can make note of relative humidity, but honestly, it doesn't really matter, it's your right. studio. Well, and, and for them to do this, would it be good? What I would probably be mm -hmm. tempted to do is do it on a surface that I typically tend to use. Good, good because point. if I never use panels, but I use canvas, canvas dries quicker usually Absolutely. than panels because you've got some air exchange. Yeah, that's a the great back. point. Great point. Le uh, likewise, if you were to use a, uh, a masonite panel okay. um, mm -hmm. that's got a very yes. absorbent ground, mm -hmm. um, that might dry way faster. So, right, really right, good right. point, Amy. Use a surface that you're generally using, um, or, or if there is two, do a sample on each mm -hmm. and then just do it. A touch test the next few days yeah. and make notes about it. Oh, right. Okay. Dry to the touch in, in two days. Right. Great. Uh, still a little tacky day three. Right. Uh, and so on and so on. And you'll have a good idea of what's going on out of the tube with That's the colors you're using. That's a brilliant idea. So you have a good starting point. Right. So cold pressed linseed oil, right, is our, is our roughly our mm -hmm. starting point mm -hmm. right there. Then we've got over here to the, to the left side, we've got a, a oils that are going to dry quicker. So let's, okay. let's go all the way over here to drying linseed oil. I'm going to put some of this out. Drying linseed oil is going to increase gloss. It's, it's fluid, not quite as fluid as this, but yeah, you're going to notice... It's spread, spread much slower. Yeah, uh, a little bit more yellow, mm -hmm. right? So that's going to increase our drying rate. We've got thickened linseed oil. Mm -hmm. And let's take a look at what this looks like. Back when we... here so they can see Oh yeah, good name. point. Thank you, Amy. No, no, that's fine. 
And then we're gonna watch watch when we when we pour this out. Thickened linseed oil. It's like honey. It's like honey. Yeah. Wow. It's it's actually it's a good point that you say it's like honey, but hold that thought because it's actually a little bit more syrup like when we get to the thing mm, that looks more honey like. Okay, okay. So a little bit more syrup like. Oh yeah, there. I know what you're gonna Yeah, you know that. you probably know where I'm oh, going. Oh yeah. So thickened linseed oil. Um, has has been thickened a lot of times. Uh, you you might see uh, see a, uh, an oil called blown oil. Mm -hmm, Usually, mm -hmm. uh, heat is blown through there, right. right? Because oil oil needs oxygen to dry. Right. So we're already getting it to dry, and that's thickening it up a little bit. Right. Drying poppy oil. So poppy is different than linseed, right? It's yes, a, it's it a is. different it's a different seed. Um, and you you can use walnut oil as well. Uh, okay. Some companies will use that. If you've ever smelled that when it goes rancid, though. It's, yes, yeah, if, it's pretty off -putting. If it's been around for a while. Not great. So let's, let's look at drying poppy oil. And this is very fluid. Yes, it is. And much more pale. Um, and what you'll see with drying poppy oil, or, or, or uh, what I, what I want to point out about that, is it is slower drying than cold pressed linseed oil. Mm -hmm. But this has dryers added to it. Okay. Okay, this dryers added to can, it. Can I smell it while we're doing yeah, this? Yeah, sure. Smell it if you You know me. I smell everything. I'm, I'm no, just let's curious. Look at, it's see. Like no, no, no. It's just Amy. Amy can tell. Like, like I, I like lesson. to guess what things are in things. Just yeah. yeah. This isn't. This isn't a meal. <coughs> this is oil. Yeah. It's you not, can't really. It's not very strong. Tell. No, no. And that's. I just strong. wanted to. I wanted to see right. because mm -hmm. because it's there's some things long. like there's an underpainting white that man you can open it yeah. about knocks you over. So let's take a look at refined linseed oil now. Very pale. Mm -hmm. Very, very fluid. And so what happens, it's, it's alkali refined, so it removes uh, some of the acidic nature of the right. oil, uh, makes it more pale, right. and it slows down the drying rate. Oh. So we're, we're going fastest to slowest to drying. I did not realize yep. that fastest processing to slowest it that now. way would interesting. Now you mentioned, uh, I believe you mentioned uh, honey before, mm -hmm. and I said hold that thought. Yep. When, when we were talking thickened linseed oil, but now look at I knew where you were going linseed this. stand oil. It takes a little bit. Yeah, now that's. Yeah, that's definitely. Right, and you can see how that yep. piles up. Makes it very, very glossy, mm -hmm. very slow drying. Uh, linseed stand oil is linseed oil. Mm -hmm. It's been heated to over 500 degrees for several hours, and it makes it a much more viscous. Almost like polymerizes Yes, it. absolutely, okay. and that, and that, and it, but it's a very slow drying uh, oil. Very, very high gloss, and again, right. You notice it, this is what I used on this, so that, right. that's how high gloss that became. You could probably get a glare, all you guys looking at it out there. And then finally, uh, safflower oil. Very, very pale, right? Safflower seeds. And this one is very, very thin and very pale mm. as well. So now let's take a look. I mean, what we're going to do is we're going to slowly kind of slide this around. And give this everybody a look. Part. Yeah, so, so here's the thing, guys. What we're showing you right now, coloring, uh, showing you viscosity, which we're going to see because we're going to tilt yeah. this and get it to slide a little bit more, and also drying rates. Mm -hmm. So if we're talking about drying oils mm -hmm. and we're talking about creating a, a medium, that is a drying oil that has some solvent right. to it that we're going to use to paint right. and change our viscosity of our... Uh, tubes of paint, mm -hmm. then we have to ask ourselves certain questions. What are you trying to do? Right. Right. So if your right. main goal, Amy, is, well, I want it to dry very, very fast, don't choose that. No, God, no. Right? Go over to this side of the spectrum. Right. But then also within that, <coughs> what does the paint feel like and how does it move? Right. So then let's tilt this over here. This is going to be the best. Right. So this is kind of like a, I like to, uh, I like to say this is sort of like a, a a drying oil horse race. It's like yeah. who's gonna win, right? Or I grew up around the corner from a racetrack, and I could always hear them calling, and it was like, and they're off. And oh wow, let me call it refined linseed yeah, oils yeah. in the lead. I don't know that saffron oil is speeding up. It is speeding up. I'm it's tilting going a little bit. Track, look at look at stand oil. Yeah, it's not. Stand oil and the sun thickened is just. Stand oil is. As a dog, yeah. if this was a horse race, forget it. Stand oils winning nothing. Yeah, your safflower oil, oil, oil done. Safflower oil won it right there. Obviously, how much you put out too. We weren't right, scientific right. about yeah, how but much it's, we put but out. But it's still, it's, but you get an idea. Were extremely yeah. similar. Yeah, and and really, when you when you thin it out like that too, notice just how clear poppy mm -hmm. oil looks. 
Again, not as mm -hmm. clear as refined linseed oil, not as clear as mm -hmm. uh, safflower oil here as well. So once again, we've got to ask ourselves questions. What are we trying to do with our painting process? Mm -hmm. Do we want to be, so, so safflower oil, if you really want to be slow drying because you like to make a lot of changes, a lot of blending over right. time. Maybe Doing you, a lot of glazing or things where you, you need to be able to keep working kind of wet and wet. Absolutely, okay. then, then wonderful, mm -hmm. right? But, but maybe you don't want it to be that slick and fluid. Maybe mm -hmm. you like a thicker application. For, so for those right. of you out here who are newer to oil painting, um, when, we, when we pull up, let's, let's actually take some paint, Amy, and we'll put here, a little bit of... Turn this around. Yeah, go so ahead, turn that around. Uh, they can see which is which here. Yep. Actually, I'm going to use, uh, <laughs> not that it matters, but I'm going to use some uh, cobalt blue deep right here. So let's just take a look at putting this down, cobalt blue deep. Okay, right. really pretty color. I have to make that noise when it's cobalt. What was that noise again? <laughs> yeah. Okay, so drag. What we yeah. call how our how our paint mm -hmm. pulls across the surface. Can you hear that rough mm -hmm. surface? Paint very thick, mm -hmm. very viscous, right out of the tube. Right, that's that's sort yeah, of our drag. drag. Mm -hmm. Right, it, it it starts to not mm -hmm. be, you know it grabs. It's mm -hmm. dragging and grabbing on there. Let's put that same amount out over here now, and let's take refined linseed oil, and what happens when we put it in here. Oh yeah, that changes mm -hmm. the whole thing. Makes it much much more fluid. Mm -hmm. It makes it more transparent. Right. Right. Because I'm thinning it down. Uh, it's going to add gloss to it mm -hmm. as well. But it's going to change the way that feels. And then let's take a look at linseed stand oil over here. <laughs> right. Totally different. Wipe that off. Again, similar mm -hmm. drag. But we take this now and. Right, you can see yeah, that syrupy it's, nature. Yeah, it's, it's got kind of a string. Well, look at look at even mm -hmm. here, just how much more glossy that is. But it's oh, still yeah. got a lot of drag. It's going to thin it out to a degree, but it's still got a lot of drag. Mm -hmm. But what we don't have right here, Amy, is we don't have a medium just yet. Right. We're talking about drying right. oils. And that and that confuses a lot of people. Okay. So they'll contact me and be like, "Well, what oil do I use? What mediums are you using?" And then they're like, yeah. What? <laughs> so here's here's the deal. Let's take a look again at um, linseed stand oil. Where did that go, Amy? Right here. So we've got linseed stand oil, um, just out of the out of the mm -hmm. container, just like we had mm -hmm. right here. This is linseed stand oil, Amy, that has five parts solvent mm -hmm. to one part oil. You can see just how much more fluid yes. that is. It's even more fluid than, than the safflower oil or the cold press. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. This has uh, one part sand oil to one part solvent. So if you look at those, this is definitely still viscous. Right. Nowhere near as much as this, but it's not as fluid as this. Right. So here's the deal. We talk about fat over lean when we talk about oil painting. What does fat over lean mean? Right. I like to think of a house building analogy. Mm -hmm. All right. So if you start with the foundation of your house, what mm -hmm. do you usually build as a foundation? Usually stonework, the stone, right? right? Brick, uh, something firm. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, the cinder blocks, mm -hmm. stuff like that, right? It's a, it's a very solid. Mm -hmm. It's a very rigid form. Mm -hmm. And then if you build with uh, wood on top of that, the wood flexes. Mm -hmm. Think about it if we switch yes. that. Now, if we put wood below and it flexed, and then we had concrete up top, we would have the concrete breaking. It would right, be, right, start right. to crack over right. time. So the same thing happens when we paint and we think of the rule of fat over lean. Mm -hmm. We're talking about fat, more oil, mm -hmm. over less oil mm -hmm. content in our layers. Or we could think about that as thick over thin. Yes. And we could think about that as slow drying over fast drying. Yes. So here's the deal with that. If we are painting and I use just stand oil like that mm -hmm. as my first layer. Right. Number one, it's quite thick. Yes. It's very slow drying. Yes. I have that, and so, so think of this. This is my layer of right, just the right, thick right. stand oil. Slow drying, very fatty, and I put a very thin layer of something on top of that that's gonna dry much quicker. Right. So this is dry up top, and while this is still flexing and moving and right. trying to dry, right. this up here starts to crack. Right. We don't want that to happen. No, we do not. So every time you guys out there are, are painting with oil paint, you've got to ask yourself, am I putting down something? So, so let's just 
just talk tubes for a minute. Right. We talked about alizarin crimson being a very, right. very oily, very slow drying. Katie, can you pop it up to see the Jimmy? So if we do that, if we were just to paint with just uh -huh. out of the tube, no, no, no medium, right. no drying right. oil, no nothing, and we use alizarin crimson, that's slow drying. Right. Seven days or more. Right. Then we go and we put a layer of yellow ochre on top <laughs> of that. Very fast yeah. drying. Earth tone. Right. Yep. So what's going to happen? This is going to be taking all this time to dry because mm -hmm. it's very slow, mm -hmm. it's very oily, and now we put something leaner right. on top. And if we put a thin layer on top, it's even going to dry faster. Right, right, right. And that means this thing on top is going to crack because what's underneath is right. flexing over time. I like to think of um, think of a balloon that has like plaster of Paris on mm -hmm. it. That balloon's very flexible. Right. Plaster of Paris dries real fast let out a little air and that's going to crack right. on top. So you want to make sure that does not happen. But when we talk about a medium, that's what these are. When I've added solvent to my drying mm -hmm. oils, I create a medium. And a medium is going to alter viscosity, mm -hmm. it's going to possibly change the sheen, mm -hmm. and it's going to change the drying time. Right. But what it's going to do is let down my paint because for the most part probably using your paint out of a tube like that Think about trying to cover this whole canvas, Amy, oh, yeah. if, it, if it's that thick. Yeah. You're, you're, you're not going to be able to really do that. Well, not only would it take forever, mm -hmm. I mean, you could. Yeah. You could. But Absolutely. you would also be wasting a lot more paint. You'd use a, a that's, tremendous that's amount That's one of, of the paint. things that people don't understand with mediums. They'll say, I go through so much paint. If you use mediums and you employ that to help make your painting experience easier, chemically where it's going to be structurally more sound, right. you're using way less paint. Right, a like absolutely. Like ridiculous amounts less paint than a if you were just painting straight from the For tube. sure, for sure. So so again, let, let's let's review here real quick. If, if, if I have all these seven things out here, how do you make a choice between them? Mm -hmm. Again, fastest to slowest drawing. So what are you trying to do in the studio? Right. If you're, let, let's say you're a painting student, uh, you, you've got 15 weeks to make paintings. You probably don't want to oh use God, stand yeah. oil, linseed, or refine. You probably don't want to be in this range right. because you've got little time to paint. Right. Right. Um, if you are painting on the go, you're traveling somewhere, you probably don't want to yeah, have this. You're going to be carrying right? wet stuff around yeah. for the rest of your trip. Yeah. If, if you're around somewhere for, let's like, say, two weeks mm -hmm. out painting on it, you're, you're going to be on this retreat. I know you're going to be doing pastels, I think you said. Yeah. But if you were oil painting and you were gone for a week or two, oh, yeah. this is still going to be wet at the end of this week. Oh, yeah, week. definitely. We're over here. You're, you're going to be set up a bit and, and not have as, as much of an issue. And then the second thing, once you've determined your drying rate of the oil, then your other thing to determine is how do you like the paint? Do you right. like a thicker feel? Right. Do you like a thinner feel? And again, how much solvent you put in there to a degree mm -hmm. uh, is going to change that. Now, if you're just painting all in all, a la prima is what mm -hmm. we call all in one right. go. You're, you're just going out to paint mm -hmm. for the day. So if Amy, you and I are going to out to paint for two, three mm -hmm. hours, we're doing one layer, doesn't matter. Right. We're talking fat over lean is really something that is important if you're working in right. layers, right? Right. So, this having having five parts uh, solvent, uh -huh. roughly to one part uh, of your drying mm -hmm. oil, is a good all-around lean mixture. Right. We could use that, and that's going to be, as you can see in here, quite runny. Right. And if we wanted to do a one-session painting, no problem. Right. No problem. One-to-one -one ratio. You like to paint a little bit thicker. Mm -hmm. You like a little bit more drag. You don't want mm -hmm. it to be as runny as this. Mm -hmm. One 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 painting session. No problem. Mm -hmm. Just go ahead and use that. But if it's going to be two sessions, here's where things get messed yes. up. You want this one leaner, right? Right? Less oily, mm -hmm. right? So it's lean, right? More oily, right? Fat over lean, right? This one because it has more oil, mm -hmm. slower drying. This one faster drying, mm -hmm. right? So we're maintaining that, right? <clears throat> Thick over thin, mm -hmm. right? So slow over fast. Thick over thin, more oily over less oily. Right. Those are your three ways to think about the fat over mm -hmm. lean rule. And if you're writing that down now, great. Relook at the episode. Yeah, yeah. And and check that out. But those are your three ways to go about looking at the drying oils. Um, the other thing that's important that we haven't mentioned is what are you painting with? What colors rather? Right. So let's say, Amy, your palette is, or anybody out there, your palette is very, very light in tone. Mm -hmm. um, it's a lot of uh, a lot of whites, 
Um, it's possibly a lot of pale blues. Right. Don't use this. Right. If you use the thickened linseed oil with as yellow as that is, you are going to take on that yellowish tinge mm -hmm. if you're mostly using white. If you're using pale blues, it wouldn't affect the, the, the cobalt right, blue deep right, care right. so much, but if you were using a paler blue, maybe mm -hmm. a cerulean blue, mm -hmm. um, you might get a greenish tint mm -hmm. to that. So that's why a lot of times what you see in, and I'm going to steal one of our Yeah, I've, I've noticed that about Windsor Newton, uh, yeah. that there will be safflower oil in some. Right, or different right. So you see safflower oil. Mm -hmm. This this is a flake white hue, um, so it's safflower oil, mm -hmm. and it's safflower oil because it will not affect. Right. Because that. that was. I mean, after that poured off with this, um, can you show the split screen for us, Katie? Oh, okay. Oh, it's so tiny. I didn't oh, see it so there. Tiny. Sorry, oh, Katie. Picture in picture. Yeah, it it blends in with the table on our screen. This. You almost can't even see that this is here because it's so white, it, it's so clear. It just right, blends in right, with that. Right, right. So can. that and makes sense with the white. Then. Yeah. And before we even go ahead, let's let's put a little, a, a few more swatches down so we can just see the difference uh, between these. And and once again, Amy, we're we're doing this just to illustrate uh, here um, the change in viscosity mm -hmm. from each one. Right. But we wouldn't want to just go full tilt oil here. Right. right. If you were if you were in your last stage of a painting, let's say three, four, five, six mm -hmm. layers or, or more, you were in your very last stage and you're doing some glazing, you could just go with some oil. Right. Again, why? Because it, it's, it's going to be very fatty. Right. Right? Uh, Lindsay Stand Oil is very self-leveling. Mm -hmm. um, it's wonderful for glazes. It gives a beautiful high gloss to it. Um, but let's take a look at safflower oil. Look how, look how very runny that mm -hmm. is. Right? So we, we talked about in the beginning here, we talked about a lot of times what you see students do is they thin out their yes. paint a whole lot. Right. This is where even in the earliest stage, that's where I would go with something that's, regardless of which drying oil you're mm -hmm. using, I'd go with something that is, again, about five parts solvent uh, okay, to one okay. part oil. That way it's still got binder in there. Right? So, right. so this would still have one part binder. Right and we, we wouldn't have the issue of that color coming off. And, right, And that's exactly. what you don't want to have. I feel like you work hard, you, you, you make mm -hmm. this painting, you're learning, you're, you get it to where it wants to, you know, you want it to be aesthetically, and then down the road you find out yeah. that it's fallen apart. And, and I had that with stand oil in uh, early graduate school paintings. Uh, they actually ended up sticking together. Oh no! Yeah, they stuck together. They were perpetually tacky like this. Oh, I've, like I've had this. some that oh, I had to do a just a demo for something here, and the, oh, it was a water mixable brand, and the stand oil. Literally two years later, you could still put a fingerprint yeah. in it. Yeah, that from, that'll happen from, ha from having to use it to show the glazing. But it was just like, oh. Yeah, and, and one of the reasons that happens, if you flip your fat over lean mm -hmm. rule, and you and you have lean over fat, mm -hmm. faster drying over mm -hmm. slower drying. You seal off that slower drying layer right, right, below right. from getting the oxygen it needs right. to dry. Because remember, this is not it's not watercolor, it's not acrylic. You're not in, in those cases you're drying right. by evaporation. Right. Water evaporates off, the gum arabic holds that color in place, the acrylic polymers link mm -hmm. together in an acrylic painting and hold everything into place. But here we need oxygen yes. for that to happen. And stand oil becomes very enamel-like. It does. It becomes very, very enamel-like. And, and it's, it's even good that you say that, uh, uh, enamel. People think uh, that en enamel is really a descriptor for something right. that has a very hard, shiny surface. Right. Uh, a lot of times people think that enamel is, is like something different than uh, watercolor, acrylic, right. oil, enamel. Right. So you can have an enamel-like finish with right. acrylics. Right. You can have an enamel-like finish with right. oils. Um, Let's take a little drying poppy oil here. Again, very slick. We're getting that same sort of slick feeling. Mm -hmm. So this is where, if, if I looked and said, well, I like that slick feeling. I like that, okay, but I want to dry slower, then that's my choice. Right. I want to dry faster, that's my choice. Right. Okay. Now, if this wasn't a drying poppy oil, this would be over here with the safflower oil. Exactly, so. yes, correct. Yes. It's, correct. It, actually, it's a little slower drying I believe, yeah correct okay. correct and and again the draw it's drying poppy oil right. because dryers have been added to right. it to be able to do that so that that's why you can have this very pale oil mm -hmm. very slick oil but we put it over on the mm -hmm. on the faster drying side and then thickened linseed oil that's that's an awesome way to do it because otherwise it can introduce a host of problems yes and again thickened linseed oil has very much that same sort of feel as uh, as stand mm -hmm. oil does uh, very glossy like that 
but again, over on the thicker spectrum, and also color differences depending right. on my palette. Because so that's been given time to start to set up. Absolutely. Where, which makes it, which is why it's thicker. Yeah. It, and also why it's a little bit more yellow. Yeah, it, it's it's taken on more oxygen already. It's already it's right. already moving. It's on and, the move and, to yeah, drying. It's on the move to drying. Yes. Starting it. Yeah. And then very, very fluid with the uh, linseed, uh, the drying linseed oil as well, but going to be our, our fastest. Yeah, that's so, nice. so think about this, I mean, we, we, we went back before and we said, hey, if, if you're in your studio and you've got your paint out of the tube, mm -hmm. thin swatch, thick swatch, yes. do a little dry test. You, so that mm -hmm. you generally have an idea of what your, what your oils mm -hmm. dry like, depending on what colors you're using. Then if you make a choice of one of your drying oils based on drying rates, based on thickness, thinness mm -hmm. of viscosity, mm -hmm. thicker viscosity, thinner viscosity, and color, then I would do the same test with that. Yeah. And and do it with, like I said, like a like a five uh, part solvent to one part oil mm -hmm. mixture. Because again, it's a, it's a general good lean mixture. Mm -hmm. And if you're not doing anything in layers, or that's just gonna be your starting point where right. you wanna, you want to sketch out gesturally your uh, your painting. Right. Good good way to lean it out. Um, good way to keep that going. And and I should mention um, we're using Sansador. Mm -hmm. Sansador is a Windsor and Newton solvent. Mm -hmm. um, Sansador as in sans odor. Uh, so it's a low mm -hmm. odor. Um, it's a low odor mineral spirits essentially. Right. Um, the thing about solvents that to me is important. Um, when I was in graduate school, I used turpentine. Yes. Yeah, and I would I would wash my hands with turpentine, and then wonder why my skin got so dry. Um, now I wouldn't I wouldn't wash my hands with this either. No, no, no I, I, yeah, but that's yeah. But what happens uh, is you, you want to think about how caustic that is to your skin. Oh yeah, um, definitely. Not only that, you want to think about uh, your your flashpoint of a solvent that yes. you're using. So if we use a solvent that everyone knows about, uh, something very volatile, gasoline. Mm -hmm. Right, gasoline's like negative forty-five degrees Fahrenheit, right. and a flash point is when the vapors, right, the vapors mm -hmm. that come from that solvent, from that volatile material, right. if they come in contact with a spark, right, 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 that's why you're not supposed to have gasoline in the trunk of your car, right, right, right. Um, if you look at uh, turpentine, turpentine is around oh, I think it's about about forty, uh, about fifty degrees or so. Wow, um, is your um, Actually, no, a little bit higher. Sorry, I mean about yeah. ninety-one. Yeah, Fahrenheit. I want to say it seems like it was ninety-one Fahrenheit. From from having a studio that didn't have uh, climate control oh, for a there while, you go. Yeah. I had to be very aware oh, very of, cautious that of that yeah. because it was like you know that could. Yeah, and so regardless of any any material that you're using as a solvent, you've got rags yeah. and stuff. Put it yes. in a metal container. Yep. Right. Put it in a metal container. Mm -hmm. um, but again, uh, turpentine about ninety-one. Mm -hmm. Um, and then you've got uh, mineral spirits about mm -hmm. 101. Mm -hmm. uh, Sand stores 150. That's awesome. So if we're at 150 degrees, um, we've got bigger problems than our yeah than yeah our yeah. Solvent. We're yeah in a crazy I don't think crazy that's climate. your first problem. Yeah, your first problem is get out of 150 <laughs> degree yeah, uh, yeah. temperatures. Don't don't be there. <laughs> uh, that's not great for you. Um, but just a little note on solvents, very important. So let's say Amy that. Um, Drying is super important to us. Fast drying is super important right. to us. Let's skip any of these then. Okay. Let's get rid of them. That was your cue. Get rid yeah, of yeah. Them. Oh. That's your, that's your I, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm, I'm transfixed. <laughs> like looking at the. Co yes. Okay. I'm gonna move this looking over here. Blue. All right. And what we're gonna do, Amy? We're gonna transition, and we're gonna take a look at alkyds. All right. So what is an alkyd? Amy, what is an alkyd? So alkyds go back uh, quite a ways. Uh, around 1901, uh, alkyds are invented by General really? Electric. Yes, um, they they were used as insulators. Oh, right. Okay. Um, it's not until about the 1930s uh, that alkyds are used in uh, architectural coatings. Mm. And then somebody like uh, Picasso uh, found use in them through architectural coatings and house paints and things like that. Um, and then it was in 1967, 66, 67, when Windsor and Newton came out with its Liquin, uh, first Liquin original. It wasn't called original. Right. Because there, yeah, wasn't, it was, yeah. there wasn't any it other was one. It. it was just Liquin. So what is an alkyd? Okay, an alkyd is an oil that has been modified with alcohol. Mm -hmm. So A L al alkyd, mm -hmm. alkyd, that first part. Right. And acid, alkyd alcohol and acid it's mm -hmm. been modified 
generally speaking with uh, art materials, you use soy oil. Mm -hmm. It yellows less uh, than, uh, than linseed oil, right. than like a cold pressed linseed oil. So that modification with alcohol and acid means it's gonna speed up your drying rate by 50%. So if you guys are out there, um, and again, I, I have a, a former colleague of mine from my teaching days, uh, he likes to use alkids in his class with his students right. because they're under the gun in 15 weeks to yeah, make yeah. several several yeah. you know several paintings. Mm -hmm. and they don't have the time for safflower oil no. to slow down that drying rate. So with these, we've got five varieties, and we'll pour out a little bit. They do the same kind of thing. They're they're gonna they're all gonna speed up the drying rate by 50 percent. So if your colors are drying again, you've got that little test you did your homework, your little test. They homework. like it when we give them homework. Homework. Mm -hmm. and, but, but here's the thing. We're, we're, I, I want to talk about color mixing in a little bit, too. Uh, I, you know, I say homework and joke around about that. Don't, don't make it that. Well, it's, it, okay, but just like homework, yeah. it, it, is, it is as important as the work that you do because if you're taking the time to look at the different mediums that you've got, look at your mm -hmm. paints, look at your colors, you're finding ways that are going to help you be a better painter. Yeah faster, especially if you do a lot of commission work. Yeah. You, you're under the gun, you can shoot yourself in the foot really easy by not taking the time. The little bit of time this is going to take is time and money no, it's well, well spent. spent. Absolutely yeah. it's well spent. And, and, and time is money. You know, and I say, but I say it doesn't have to be work because like I go into my studio and okay, you're, you're, the, you're an artist who maybe you're a natural procrastinator. Mm -hmm. Number one, maybe you go into your studio. People are raising their hands off. <laughs> They're set all like, <laughs> all waving. Uh, so maybe you're a natural procrastinator. Yeah. Maybe yeah. you're just having a crappy day. Maybe you're going to your studio. <laughs> there's more hands being raised. Uh, maybe it has you, nothing to do with you. I, <laughs> well, I'm getting on a flight home tomorrow. So even if it does, you're like, yeah. Uh, the, uh, the other thing that could happen: you're in your studio, you're working on something, and you're you're at a roadblock. Right. Right, right, you're right. just, you know, I'm just not into it today. Um, so that's when, yeah, that's when I would <laughs> take the time. Uh, like sometimes I, I draw my sketchbook, but other times I'll perform little tests. So I might mess around and just perform little color studies. Mm -hmm. In this case, you can try different uh, mediums, different drying mm -hmm. oils, different alkyds, mm -hmm. make little swatches, make notes, and it, it will serve you well. If I could step back from all the daily responsibilities in my job and mentally step away from my work and right. just spend three months color mixing like I did in college when I thought it was mm. a horrible chore. Yes, yes. I, I mean, Isn't you know, it, I yeah. would love to do that because that's yeah. how you that's how you learn. So Liquid Original so is, uh, make sure my palette knife is clean, Liquid Original, um, kind of thick, mm -hmm. right? But not gel, actually I'll let you feel that, Amy. Not gel-like though. Right, it'll, so it'll sit up a yeah. little bit. Now, is this thixotropic where it's gonna ah. flatten out when you're? It feels like it is. Ah, Amy, you Sorry. scientist, you thixotropic. I, I don't. Okay, so so I don't use <laughs> Hold that I don't use alkyds. So Hold that I'm thought. asking because I'm it's a good, curious. It's a good question. Amy, okay. Amy just laid a big word Sorry. on you. Thixotropic. That's like we, uh, we've. I've tried, word to, score I've tried to beat it in the on before. Scrabble. Yeah. Yeah. Well, let's, well hold, hold the thixotropic okay. thought, and we'll get back to that term. Uh, this one is liquid fine detail. Mm -hmm. So you could imagine if you wanted to do things that had fine right. detail, you'd probably want it to be able to be much right. more fluid. Yes, so very fluid and control. Let me be careful about pouring that out. Oh, my. Right? It's like the safflower oil yeah. thickness. Yeah, it's like the really. safflower oil thickness, kind of like the poppy oil almost yeah, yeah. in color, yeah. right? So let's, uh, we have that one. Let's look at liquid light gel. Liquid light gel is more what we call thixotropic. Okay, uh, yeah. I feel like it should oh, be a game show where it's like ding, ding, Sorry. ding, 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 a word of the day is thixotropic. I'd be like, ooh, ooh, ah, look, I'm, I'm doing my like hot music. Yeah. Ah. Yes, so yeah. there you go. Scream so, it loud. Thixotropic. Yes, there we go. T H. I X A T R I don't know. That's I have, to, I have to write it out. Fixotropic. I have, no, I can't. I have to write it out. I believe I just won the spelling bee. You I did. Somebody's no, probably looking no. it up right yeah. now and it's oh, wrong. No, it's a. Oh. Okay, I lost Where's the spelling bee. All right. I googled it. I don't. Like, I don't. I don't like. I don't like Google. Uh, fixotropic. What does that mean, everybody? Um, the one thing that I, I like to come uh, think about when I use that term, fixotropic, uh, sort of like toothpaste. Yes. Toothpaste, right? Very gel-like. You put it on yep. your toothbrush, um, but obviously you brush, it gets mixed in your mouth, and it becomes fluid. Right. So liquid light gel, 
very gel-like, but the more I mix it around, yes, it levels out. It levels out. Very hard to do that in, in the confines yeah. of this. Um, but yeah, the more I do that, the more it levels out, I can get rid of all that gel-like consistency. But then when it's at rest, and I got some a of the, glue in there. the thickness yep. comes back. Wow, yeah. yeah. But but what that does, we'll see we'll see as we we'll flip yeah. this in a minute, right? Just like we right, did right. the other. Um, and it's gonna it's gonna be very controlled. Much more than the fine detail. Yes. And then we've got liquid impasto. Um, so if any of you out there you've been studying oil painting or art, just art in general, impasto, thick brush strokes, mm -hmm. right? Liquid impasto medium is a gel which makes very thick marks I just want to touch the right thing. now all of these you can touch it if you want all of I those know. are going to be very glossy and yes. liquid impasto that if we like make be much more matte well or, or uh, yeah maybe? kind kind of it's it's not as glossy mm -hmm. as these three but hold that again you're you're ahead of me on each I'm one sorry hold on. no, you're good. I'm, you're good. Okay, so this um, is as much for me as them because yeah. it may, I'm like, ah, All right, so, so look at that kind of ridge. It's going to yeah, hold that oh yeah, ridge, you can get nice. right? The next one, the last one, is liquid oleo pasto. And you while... Know, you know, we did a mediums show just so I could see what that looked like. Oh, did you? Really? Well, that's... I was like, there's all these mediums I've never used. Let's do a medium. Oh, yeah. That's see, where you definitely see how much more matte. That's the money shot right yeah, there. Yeah. That's just fantastic. Right? So liquid oleo pasto... Can you lift that up a little so they can see? Absolutely. Like, Matter of fact, of this. So they can see the straight texture. up to the Oh, straight up? Yeah. yeah. That's how and then we, we can see it from yeah. the side, too. There we yeah. go. Cool. Oh, yeah. Uh, so, yeah, so you can tell here um, much yeah. more matte yeah, yeah. right than here. And also, I'm going to put back down here for a second. Um, when I can make, the, actually, let's, let's, let's do this. Let's go back to you, Amy. I'm going to put, I'm going to put this yeah, out again. I want you to feel the difference between these two. And then you can explain it to everybody just how different. So spread out liquid impasto. Mm -hmm. uh, you can tell obviously they're both mm -hmm. gel-like, but if you don't feel it, okay, that's got it's. It's actually pretty firm. It's pretty firm. That's definitely very firm. Until you. Oh no, that's that's like it. I know it doesn't have it in it, but it feels like mediums that have marble dust and stuff yeah. like that in it. Yeah. And and it's um got more kind of a stringy nature. Mm -hmm. It picks. It wants yeah. to pick up. Wow, that's. Um, okay, so this sounds weird. It yeah. feels like the putty that when you're doing makeup, the feet are mine. I did a lot of makeup. It's it's the same texture of that. You're still out of my wheelhouse right now. But, well, but when, I'm when, going you're making, when you're making yeah. scars or oh, things oh, like I that. See. Oh, yes, it's, I see. It's like special It's literally effects. the same texture. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay, yeah. And, no. and it looks like the same color, too, which is yeah. even creepier. Yeah, so, yes. so what will happen is you, you'll get these. <laughs> This will stay with like these harder yeah, peaks yeah. to it. Uh -huh. Oleo pasto has more of a rounded yes, definitely. nature to it. Yes, it's much more natural. Yeah, and all of these will speed up the drying rate mm -hmm. by 50%, which mm. is amazing with something that thick. And let's let's turn it around just like we did now, the other. Now, question, yeah. with these two, mm. what's the ratio that's the maximum amount of these you can mix with the color before you're gonna have issues? Yeah, good question. These are not, um, I, I should clarify something here, that I, I'm glad you brought that up. So these are mediums. Right. These yeah, are yes. ready to paint with. They right. have a solvent content right. in them already, right. as opposed to the drying oils that we talked about before, right. where we want to mix right. some solvent to it. Right, right. Right, and you can actually, you'll, you can smell that a little bit mm -hmm. with these uh, as well. Um, but your your ratio you can go you can go pretty far with these really yeah so let let's let, well, okay. let's get back to that because I want right. to mix color with it okay let's so hold that thought for and a sec and it looks like they've got a couple questions yeah, we'll, some questions we'll do that and then we'll yeah oh yeah wow that fine detail just, just real quick goes. is it can you mix the original and the the liquid original and the fine detail together to get something in between yeah good question yes you can. Yes, you can. You can do that. Absolutely. That's a really good question. Um, that's sort of like... Um, that's true for all of them? Yeah. Th yeah, they could be intermixed and that's... But but, but here's the thing. Here's the thing. Uh, so, liquid fine detail and oleopasta. 
Yeah, there's I, solids I, in that. Could, that's could, not, you, could you mix the two together? You, you would have a bicep. It's, like, but but the thing is, you've got it you know, creamy enough to, you're you're going with right. something extremely fluid, right? And something right. extremely thick. Better to better to save those and get a, a medium in between. Yeah, stay if in you, your, you use them, why? You, why? It's it's yeah. almost it's almost sort of like. Um, you know, if we were talking about acrylic mediums, yes, and um, and yep. there was a matte medium, yes, and there was a and gloss, gloss medium, you could combine those two to make a satin. Which, but they're the exact same viscosity. The exact same. Viscosity. So that makes sense. That makes sense. When you're sense. taking something like this to mix it thoroughly enough, where it's going to have impart mm -hmm. the qualities that you desire, it's you're not you're never going to get it consistent each right. time, right? Right. To me. Right. I, what I would do if I if I wanted a, you know a liquid original here um, is something that's probably in between uh, light gel and impasto in, right. in its thickness already. Right. Um, let's put a little bit of color on. Yeah, put very out much some, so. I think uh, alizarin good. crimson this what, time. What was your question, Amanda? While I he's putting the paint yeah. on. Yeah. Like, how the archival rate is with these alkyds? Like, yeah. Like, yeah, there's been there's been a lot of tests. Like I said, Alkids uh, Alkids came out in the uh, uh, Windsor Newton was the first to, to market an Alkid for um, for commercial mm -hmm. use for artists. Um, there's been tests that we've had done with the Tate uh, Britain, and uh, they they have proven to be uh, flexible, if not more so than mm -hmm. traditional oils right. uh, over time. Um, so, yeah, their 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 flexibility is is wonderful, and um, and and they have the ability to. Well, you asked this question about about color. Let's take a look right here. I'm gonna I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna put out more of this yeah. here. Now, that's a lot of that's a lot of oh, color yeah, right sorry. there. Here, let's turn it so they can read which is which. Oh, thank you. Thank that you. is a lot of color. That's a lot of color right there. Now, pigment's the most expensive thing in your color. Uh, yes. Right. It's, it's which the is thing. What mediums are can be helpful for? Right. Right. So Sending let's do this. Let's cost. put. Let's put that out. And let's take all that oleopasto. Oh, look at the color. Right, now the more I add a medium, the more I'm going yeah. to make it a bit more transparent for sure. Yeah. But in terms of volume of paint, that's right there. Yeah. Yeah, you, t you, had, you had a bl tiny blob like that that's yeah. now as much as of that. Yep. So if, if opacity isn't what you're worried about, right. That's, That's a perfect. nice way yes. to be able to extend. Oh you, yeah, you were, you were talking about that before. The ability mm -hmm. to ex uh, extend your paint, um, the ability to get that to glide and move. Well, and you know when when people customers would ask about the, you know this paint's very paste like compared to this paint. There's a lot of paints that are brushable out of the tube. Yeah. But what you're what you're losing in that is the concentration of pigment that can get you further. Yeah. It, it's, it's, there's a lot more pigment for your dollars. Absolutely. That's why mediums are very important because besides helping you with each of the, t with the styles of painting that you're wanting to do, mm -hmm. kind of make that work better or dry quicker yes. or whatever, you're also making that tube of paint go way further. You are, and w but, but also what you're doing, I mean, you know, if, if you use the paint simply out of the tube, um, you're, you're limited by what that that viscosity of that mm -hmm. paint out of the tube, right? And uh, who, who as an artist wants to be limited, right? Right, we, right, and, and right. We want like yeah. you know, there are times when I have painted on. Uh, this is a canvas board. I don't, right. I don't prefer canvas boards. I like uh, canvas or linen, um, and and it's got this wonderful texture yes. to it. And I like the drag that I get mm -hmm. across the surface. Okay. But there's also times I've painted on masonite. Yes. The same, the same paint mixture that I used on canvas on a slick surface yes, like masonite will slide totally across the surface. Yep. I could wipe into it and get back down to the surface mm -hmm. a lot easier, um, reveal lower portions of it. So there's a different feel in right. viscosity based on the surface alone. Right. So this on a rough surface compared to this on a, yes. a smooth surface is going to feel different as right. well. Right, right. So you brought up that initial point. Of, of testing the drying rate of a color mm -hmm. on the surface that you're going to use, yes. but also test how does it feel mm -hmm. on the surface that you're using. Mm -hmm. You know, so and and the, the way I could visually describe that for you guys, if we go art history, right, and probably two names everybody Let, knows. Let's do that. Let's do that. Let's go right. Van Gogh. Everybody knows Van Gogh. Yeah, yeah. Right. Thick, thick. Yes. Brush strokes. Right. Right. But then let's take um, somebody like 
Vermeer. Yes. And look at this beautiful thin glaze mm -hmm. of color that we could get. Really rich. That's so pretty, yes. what, what happens when we do this, Amy, as opposed to this? We make it more transparent. Right. Look at how the the white shows yes. through, mm -hmm. or whatever I would be, whatever I'm painting on top right, of. Right, right, right. So if I had an underpainting that had, uh, doesn't matter what the, the the subject is, but it right. was white and yellow, mm -hmm. and I glaze this this uh, red over top, mm -hmm. I would start to get these warmer orange glows right. because it it would see through, right? right. I, it's like right. putting a piece of colored cellophane over something, right. as opposed to this situation where light mm -hmm. is not is not coming through right so sort of more of an a direct method of painting right and put that color down next to another and so on and so on I, I block my color in as opposed to indirect where mm -hmm. I can put this over top of something Rita you had a question what was yes. that? I've got a couple of questions actually sure um, Ian would like quiet. to know sunflower oils olive oils and grapeseed oils oh why what makes those not um, aren't appropriate. Yeah. 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 Sure. Sure. Um, it, well, so so one of the things I could I could say about that is think of something like olive oil. Uh, olive oil is not a drying oil. Right. All right. So spill that on your counter. If if you if we spilled some stand oil mm -hmm. on just a counter at home, mm -hmm. let's say in the kitchen. Right. Well, don't don't have don't have your art supplies in the kitchen anyway. But mm -hmm. let's just say, or you spill it on any surface, right. any table. After a few days, that would start to set up. Right. Spill olive oil on there. Right. And it is going to just remain wet the whole time. Right. Um, another thing that reminds me of, and this goes back to art history a little bit, is uh, Willem de Kooning. Right. Willem de Kooning uh, experimented, I believe, don't quote me on this one out there, guys, but you can Google it right now. I think it was some of his paintings in the 70s. Um, but I remember seeing um, a show at the Museum of Modern Art in, in Manhattan. Uh huh got to be over 10 years ago now and he had these um, paintings that he used a uh, safflower oil that was a food grade safflower oh, oil no. yeah and if you if you actually it was called sapo life s-a-f-f-o life sapo life safflower oil he would get it at a grocery store and and it would just remain so fluid and wet and, and if you look at those paintings he was making them in the, in the 70s out at his studio in the Hamptons and they're very expressionistic paintings, right. very fluid moving things, but they're a conservator's nightmare. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah. So food grade as a pair, uh, compared to mm -hmm. artist grade. Right. And the same thing could be said for um, linseed oil. Right. If you go to a hardware store, oh, you can God, buy yeah. linseed mm -hmm. oil in, yeah. in a gallon yeah. container for way... It's, it's meant for wood. Yeah, but way less. Because who cares if it yellows on wood? Absolutely, who cares I if mean, it if yellows? I mean, if you've ever see, seen pine that's not been sealed, it is usually white as can be. Maybe sure. a little yellow depending on the type of pine. Yeah. As soon as you put that on it, anything right, that's right. got that in it, right. starts yellowing up and yellowing up, and, and it gets darker yeah. and darker it and does. darker over time. It if does. you do any woodworking. So much m more Im impurities in it. Yes. And, and also think about yes. what you're doing when you're using yes. hard, uh, you know, hardware grade materials, right. or even house paint. Right. Um, when you're using things like that, you don't expect the room no, that you the, paint in a hundred years. Right, right, right. You're or, probably going to change the, house. the color. Or no, even right. in the house, you're expecting maybe 20 years out of it. At most, it's not designed to be archival long term. Right, right. It might be acidic. Yeah. You know, well, plus you, you probably just get bored yes. and want to change the color anyway o over time. Yes. So, but your paintings, you want them to last. So these are all yes. considerations yes. that you have to that you have to have. And let's go back to uh, yeah. Liquid Original here. That's actually my next set of questions. Ah, go ahead. Um, once you open the bottle of Liquid, yeah. how long will it last? Uh -huh. Will it dry up or congeal with time? Yeah. Um, and should you add any to it you open it. Yeah, no, you don't need to add it. Let's, let's start with the last one. You don't need to add any solvent to it. It's ready to go as it is. Um, if you wanted to add a drop or so to it, yeah, but it, it is it is meant to, to be the right. consistency it is and work that way. Um, yeah, anytime you let uh, oxygen yes. into here, yeah, it's going to want to congeal over time. So here's what happens sometimes. Considering People, these dry faster than the drying oils. Right. So, so, so there's a few things. Um, if if I have, you know, if I have like the the, the bottle, I don't know. There's a little bit out of it. Mm -hmm. You know, if I have the bottle half empty or something, mm -hmm. I'd suggest, and I, I don't I don't have a piece of plastic 
sleeve here or something like that. But I just stuff a little wad of something in there. You could do that with any of your drying oils mm -hmm. to take up the space where oxygen so would it doesn't, be. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and anything like that that you can then you know just pull out easily and, and, and chuck at the next session. Mm -hmm. But also um, cap things. Yes. You know, uh, sometimes people what palette will, cups are for to put the amount you need. Yeah. And don't get a bunch out. Better to open this three times while you're painting and get some out mm -hmm. than put so much out that it's been sitting there for seven hours yeah. and then going and putting it back in oh, there yeah, when yeah, it's yeah. already started. To, yeah. uh, we've had people that have done that and then they don't understand why yeah. they're liquid. And, and don't do that anyway because you're, you're probably yes. going to contaminate with the, it with the yes. color. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. No, yes. It's, it's a good point, Amy, because what happens is sometimes, um, you know, maybe, maybe something is drying like that in the jar and I'll say to people, well, you know, do you, do you cover, you know, do you cover it? Right. Well, so yes, but they're talking about, yeah, they covered at the yeah, end of the, the four hour of, yes. painting session, mm -hmm. three of yep. those a week. Now it's been 12 yep. hours that it's been open. Yep. You also don't want to, don't, don't have no, the it's, there's no point in having breathing it yep. uh, anyway. So put the, put the cap back on. Um, always a, always a good thing to do. Um, to pay, to pay attention. You, uh, Pay attention to studio uh, studio safety, but sorry, you you I can know. go go back to just now that we have yes. color in there, uh, glossy, 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 mm -hmm. not quite as glossy, mm -hmm. uh, much it's more nice, satiny. It's nice how this light gel is very much like this, just thicker. Yeah, yeah. And it's still got that kind of beautiful glaze like Absolutely. quality. Just you can see that little bit. Yeah. Yeah. Where does Lake Wind fit into the Sapphire Berlin rationale? Ah, good question. Bigger. Bigger. Let's see it. Bigger. Yeah, and, and it might be good to, mm -hmm. to, to uh, I've always heard, and just the research I've done says, mm -hmm. you either paint with these, yeah. or you paint with these. We don't, yeah. We yeah. don't cross, yeah, so, it's like sure. speaking two different languages. Sure, so I consider, you know, what, what we started out with our drying oil, with mm -hmm. the, the, the drying linseed, the poppy right. sapphire, all, all those, those seven we originally looked at, um, I, I would call those our traditional drying mm -hmm. oils, right? The traditional things. Old school. Right, old, sc old school if we want to go that way. Um, new school here, um, our synthetic uh, 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 drying alkids here. Right. Um, so yeah, I wouldn't, I wouldn't mm -hmm. cross over and use the two because you're, you're dealing with totally different right. drying rates. Um, so if you were to uh, paint with these, all of right. all of our traditional ones, mm -hmm. even the fastest one, mm -hmm. the thickened linseed oil, is all going to dry much much slower than this. Right. So I wouldn't be putting liquid. And that's uh, it's a, it's a really great question because for a long time we've gotten less questions about this at Windsor Newton in the last few years. But I've been with the company for a while, and and a lot of people would call up and they. For some reason, because the internet, right, right, they would use liquid as a varnish. Yes. Yeah. I've had have so you, many people ask that, that, and I'm like, it's a painting medium. Yeah, they would they would use it as, as oh, a varnish. Yeah. And um, so no. there, there's a, a few things about that. Um, yeah, it's gonna dry. It's gonna dry much faster than that oil underneath. Uh, that that you're you know with your traditional drying oils. That's one. It's also not removable. Yeah. Uh, as well, and, and your varnish should be something right. that is uh, that you can take off yeah. to, to to take environmental pollutants or whatever off and uh, dirt, dust, abrasion, oh, scratches, it, it, you name well, it. Well, it ages over time. You name it. Give yeah. it a nice fresh, you know, any cleaning of those, coat. Yeah. Any of those. So yes, another question. One of our customers um, or viewers has had an issue with the liquid fine detail. The lid essentially getting stuck. Yeah, good, 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 good. That's a really good question, and I can totally 100% address that because we've had that. Mm -hmm. um, we did have an issue where some caps had a problem um, inside. So these are childproof caps. They're meant to go <laughs> down. Uh, they're childproof caps. They're not people-proof right, right, caps. Right. Uh, we had a batch of them that were that the inside oh, no. ro rotated. So when you when you push down, you usually have to push down on a childproof right, right. cap and go like quarter turn. Yeah. You'd have to push down and go almost yes. a three quarter, yes, and obviously your wrist doesn't mm -hmm. go that way. Um, so that was a batch of bad caps we got, which is uh, has been fixed now. Mm -hmm. um, if there's some floating around out there, um, you can reach out to us, and we'll we'll take care of you on that. But um, yeah, that I was think simply her a cap more issue. The the liquid getting on like oh the inside yeah. Oh. On. And yeah. what, you know what that happens? That even happens with drying oils. Yeah, it's it, good to clean the threads. Really 
It yeah. happens. With, it happens with all paints. Uh, yeah, I, I, I would. I, it sounds like a. Cleaning with mineral spirits. Yeah, you could definitely do that. I mean, it seems like a silly, and, uh, and I'm not being flippant about it, but it seems like a silly thing to just make sure they're cleaned it's, oh, it out. Seem, it seems too easy. It seems too. Yeah. yeah but no. but everybody's excited to paint. Yeah. You're not always being the most careful when you dump it out, and if it's runnier. It tends to get on the threads. People don't notice until it gets all gummy. Yep. Absolutely. But yes, you could take a little bit of mineral spirits and, mm -hmm. and, and do that and clean, clean it out. Clean both the threads on the inside of the cap absolutely. and on the uh, bottle itself. But, but yeah, and, and, and this is a this is somebody who can get quite messy with my own supplies. I'm sure you do I've too. seen pictures. Uh, yeah, so <laughs> Uh, yeah, try to try to try to just be careful about that, and, and you won't have that problem. But yes, you could you could take a little solvent and and uh, begin to clean that out, and then any other residue scrape away with a palette knife. But you should be um, fine otherwise. Let's, right, um, let's uh, yeah, let's move that over because I want to look at some other things, and then and then if mm -hmm. other questions come in about the drying yeah, oils fine. and the outfits, I'll put, I'll we can we can go back to them. But I want to take a look at. I'm going to take a piece of. Anyway. Paper here, and I'm going to take uh, Arsh's oil paper. Just yeah, this is Arsh oil paper. Uh, so it's a paper that's been primed, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, again, sort of one-on-one. -on -one, don't want to assume anything, but if you paint on paper with oil, oil will seep through, degrade the paper over time. It'll do the same thing to canvas. Yes. So you want to make sure it's primed. Mm -hmm. um, so just so you can see that this is Arsh oil paper, mm -hmm. which you can also paint with acrylic on it as well. Yep. Oh, try nice. to paint with uh, watercolor on it. It's it's uh, not absorbent enough, right? Right. And it'll it, it just you won't get oil good washes. Oil pastels work amazing. On uh, oil pastels really will work. Like it on this. Yeah. Well, so I'm gonna use uh, I'm gonna use that, um, and I wanna I wanna make note of this, Amy. This is important, right? So if you're somebody who needed that information about drying oils mm -hmm. and or alkyds. It mm -hmm. means you're I experimenting, you're trying to figure out what works for you. Mm -hmm. Do the same thing with color. Know what the primary colors are in the range of mm -hmm. paint that you're using. That's super important. So this is Permanent Rose. This is uh, Windsor Newton Artist Oil Color. Permanent Rose. We've got Windsor Lemon. And we've got Windsor Blue Red Shade, which is a phthalo blue. I'm gonna put that out as well. And what we'll do, Amy, I think we're gonna take a little mm -hmm. bit of titanium white. Okay. We put that out here. So titanium white, uh, very cool white, a very opaque white. And I'm also gonna take some, and I'm gonna actually, let's jot that down. Titanium white, and then let's write this next one down. I'm going to put is transparent mm -hmm. white. I'm going to slide this over just a little bit so people see the yep. writing. There we go. I have a viewer who said her friend mixes liquid and mineral spirits together. I don't know what the one ratio. Would you recommend that? Or you you could th you could thin it down. Uh, you know, again, they're they're ready to go um, out of the tube, out of the jar. Um, just be careful that you don't, again, like, like we were talking early on, that you don't push your solvent. Reason. Yeah, you don't push your solvent ratio so far. And uh, you would want it to be an artist grade mineral spirits absolutely. too, not a, yeah. just a hardware store. No, 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 stay away from that. It, 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 it's, it's so tempting because of the prices of hardware store and, and yeah. household goods stores. Um, it's tempting. Right. Not great though. Um, so these colors, let's look at two things. I want to see... Um, I want to see the strength of the color mm -hmm. itself, so I'm going to take titanium white, and I'm actually going to put out some more color. I didn't put out enough, Amy, and that's something when you're playing with color, when you're testing color, put out a little more than you think. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> I'll grab the wrong <laughs> one. It's like it's what I'm here. having a studio assistant, yes. which I've never had in my life. Um, let's take some color again, roughly a one-to-one -one ratio. And oh, wow. look, look at, at what happens when you choose two different whites. Mm -hmm. This is titanium white That's up top. Great. Titanium white. We always tell viewers it's the punch you in the face white. Yeah, that's a good way to put it. It is a punch you in the face white. And this, the, the transparent white is like, oh, hey. I know. That's oh. nice. Oh, that's, Bless your heart. Did that get weird, Amy? Bless your color heart. No. No? Okay. 
This yes. is the Arsh oil paper. I think it was weir weird enough when we had matching matching bracelets. We found out we had matching, matching bracelets and didn't know. And what did you tell me it is? It, it's uh, lava stone. Lava. I had no it's idea. Because like I just found mine. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to take again roughly a one to one ratio. Oh, that becomes very lemony. Yep. And that and wow. that's where what happens is first of all. Uh, and again, let's 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 do this just for oh, viewers. So let's go. This such is a cold yellow Ooh. permanent rose right there. Windsor lemon, and then this is Windsor blue red shade. And I'm gonna already put out um, put out more right. I didn't put out enough any one of those times. I'm going to put out extra here as well. And make sure I clean off my palette knife. But what will happen is when you get a tint like this, you'll see, um, you'll bring out the color bias. Mm -hmm. So what you can tell is this is actually sort of a cool yes, red, right? Very uh, much so. Permanent rose. And we can even tell that, Amy, when we look at the back. The back has a, uh, a pigment uh, number on it, PV19. Mm -hmm. So if you look at the back of your tube of paint, it can kind of tell you what's going on with that pigment. Pigment violet, right? A violet is something that has more blue in it. 19 is just the chronological order in which that specific pigment was logged right. as a color index quinacridone number. Rose it is a quinacridone. Yeah, good. That's a whole other thing. If we were just talking color mixing, we'd That's get into just, quinacridones. Yeah. But I'll. Yeah, we had to look them all up for something like yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's so nice. Nice and rich. Right? And again, mm. we can see that this is yes. a, a, right? It gets, it gets a bit more pasty. Yes. Uh, so I, I think it's good to have a transparent mm -hmm. white in your palette if you have a white mm -hmm. um, because it can save you from getting too pasty. Right. Oftentimes people will uh, thin every or not thin, but tint everything with titanium white. Um, and it can, again, just overpower. And again, there's nothing wrong with the colors up top, the tints. I have, that's gorgeous. Yeah. Right, but, but think about something here, too. I mean, I, you know, a lot of times when, in, in uh, the education program I run, the Finer Collective, we talked about, uh, to people about the difference between student and professional grade mm -hmm, colors. Mm -hmm. You know that professional grade colors often have more pigment load. Right. Right, so. It, and that's, although that's not always the case, sometimes it can actually be different pigments. It could be different something pigments, is, absolutely. Something is called one name absolutely. and then like a lemon yellow and it's not the traditional pigments that right. are in most lemon yellows. And that's true. And, and, but because a lot of times what expensive. happens is you, you don't have the punch right. in, the, in the student grade, yes. you know, uh, the, the saturation Definitely. of color. Or you may, or in thalo, because thalo is a less expensive mm -hmm. pigment, you may have way more punch in that same grade. You might and then it might be very weak in Correct. your yellow, and then when you go to mix, it's just horribly overwhelming. Yeah, so if I like, if you have a student grade color that doesn't quite have the punch when you yes. mix the titanium white, to use the yeah. Use the transparent, transparent white, and it won't it won't oh, look it at won't. That. What did you say? Nice. It won't it won't punch it in the face. Yeah, yeah. So much, but look at how much stronger. That's yeah. That's a, a tiny huge bit, difference. Tiny bit of yellow yeah, in know. there. Oops. Oh. Tiny bit of yellow in there. Your red shade now isn't. Yeah, <laughs> this red shade is not. Right. So nice. Let's do this now. Let's wipe this off and let's take a and, and take Thalo a look isn't. at why Thalo isn't. why it's important to know what your primary color is. Well, here's permanent rose again, and I'm gonna take some Windsor blue red shade, right? The primary color mm -hmm. in the Windsor Newton Artist Oil color range. And I'm gonna go. You know what I'm gonna do? Actually, I'm gonna. I'm gonna. I'm only gonna take part of that, right? Because the phthalo blue is such a strong right, right. color. I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna mix the permanent rose with it. Mm. We can see some yeah. of that, right? But I'm. But then let's get the the the, the color to come out a little bit more. Mm -hmm. That's the transparent. Yep. Let's do it with the titanium, actually. Let's do it with that one. I'm an assistant. Yeah, you're an assistant. I like that. Oh, that color is so gorgeous. All right, look at that beautiful. Wow. Right? Now that's, that, you can tell that the, the uh, phthalo oh. blue has a strong, yeah, it does. right? So let's add a little bit more of the permanent rose to it. But what we're getting is a really 
beautiful. Violet right, but color. a lot of people take those two colors because this is blue after all, and this is right a rose, so, kind of a red, and then they get this and they're like, oh. Well, yeah. See, here, but, but look, here's what's look cool, what the though. range of it is. Yeah, and then let's take the the transparent white again. But the, the beauty of this, Amy, is that you get you can get a chromatic black. Yes, this could act as a black so, yes. for you. And then let's just let this down a little bit more with the transparent white. Oh. Yeah, that's a gorgeous, yeah. right? Okay, so, so why is that important? Because let's do this now. Let's not pay attention to the fact that these are the primary colors in the range. Let's take cobalt blue which is a blue, obviously, cobalt blue. And let's take uh, cadmium red. Right. Two very nice colors. The red has overpowered oh, that blue yes. in a huge way. Okay, fine, so let's add more blue, right? You, you almost get a color that looks like if you were painting uh, bricks on a house. Yeah, yeah. Wouldn't be bad. It's almost, it's it's a little bit like an Indian red. Yeah, kind of like an Indian red. Yeah. And again, not a bad color. No, as long as you know it, that's but, what you yeah, could get, that's exactly. great. But it's not Which is why you play a violet. with your colors. Yeah, it's not a violet. So let's add more blue. Doesn't now matter. it almost looks umbery. Almost looks more umber. Uh -huh. We're not going to get that. Right. Right? So let's add a little white even to see. Obviously we know it's not that violet, but what do we get? We add some white. That was titanium white. You can see more of the violet in it, mm -hmm. but it's a very, very dull yeah, violet. Yeah, it's almost just a, a nice kind of warm gray and that's... It's kind of like a warm gray. And that's not bad No, if it's, that's what you want. Yeah. But here's the thing, Amy. I never... And for all you guys out there, I'm never going to get this to be that. No. no. However, I could take some yellow ochre, and while this isn't going to get exactly, uh, actually, no, let me use, sorry, I don't want to use yellow ochre. I want to use, I want to go a little higher key even to show you. Let's go with the Windsor Lemon again. Yeah, let's do that, keeping with my primaries. Okay. I could take this. And that's going to gray that down, yeah, it's, but it gets more greenish. Yeah, it does. So look, I can take that beautiful violet and get closer to that, mm -hmm. but I'm never going to get there right. from there. I'm never going to take that dull color. Be, and, and why did that happen? It, it happened, and I can illustrate it pretty much with, with this board that I have here, Amy. Uh, uh, what I'm talking about is inorganic and, and organic pigments. Um, the cadmium. Right? Mm -hmm. uh, cadmium is something, is a, it's a, it's a metal. Mm -hmm. It was never alive, so we call it inorganic. Right. Never alive. And cadmium particles, uh, cadmium uh, or, or inorganic mm -hmm. pigments, tend to be uh, larger particle sizes. Right. They tend to be much more opaque. Right. And they tend to gray down when you mix them. Right. That's part of what's happening here because I was mm -hmm. using a cadmium and a cobalt. Right, so you've got two metal-based. Two metal-based mm -hmm. colors, right? Red and blue, but two metal-based right, colors. Right. Two larger pigment particle sizes. Mm. Uh, and they, they end up and, and they end up giving this sort of uh, dull kind of um, muted right. look to it. But when we have the, the other colors that I used here, which was a quinacridone, right. permanent rose is a quinacridone color, and the phthalo blue, those right. are both organic colors. Right. They're based on petroleum, so if the dinosaurs mm. weren't around, we wouldn't have those. Um, they tend to be higher in key already, higher right. in saturation. Right. They also tend to be transparent colors, and they give us this beautiful, right. clean color mix. Nice. So it's super, super important to know what your primary colors are um, in a given range. And let's tear that sheet off. Do we have any questions yeah. right now, guys? Oh, Got are there like a bazillion, Katie? Was that the... No, they're just the, um, all over the place. Yeah, yeah. But not that they're just not on topic. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's... It's not that they're off topic. They're just... There's so much information. Yeah. And everybody's kind of taking and going. Right. You know a little bit of something, so. Well, uh, since it's kind of off topic, why don't 
why don't we have him explain some, a little bit more about those whites? Because I think if anybody has anything like that, that is actually one of the questions. That would help oh, good, clear good, that good, up. Good, good, good. And then and then blacks because this yeah. is oh, great. Okay. Even, even though we're yeah, oh, even good, though perfect. we're kind of you know yeah. pushing time, this is still very important information. And if, if there was anybody we wanted to get this from, it's Jimmy. So. Good. So so um, five whites in the Windsor Newton range: mm -hmm. titanium, zinc underpainting, flake white hue, and transparent white. Uh, and I've got these things written down here, so this is a good thing to mm -hmm. go look back later on. But titanium white, your most popular, highly opaque. You just saw that in the yes. mixtures that I made. Uh, highly opaque, so it overpowers quite a bit, and it's a medium drying rate right. with those colors. Um, zinc white is much more transparent. You can see that over this black right. stripe right, right here just how opaque this is. Titanium white, very, very cool too. Um, still cool with zinc white, but the zinc in there makes it a semi-transparent color mm -hmm. and it's much more slow drying rate right. as well. Underpainting white is a rapid drying rate. Right. And why? Well, titanium white and zinc white both have safflower oil. We saw that when we compared right. the oils, it was our okay. slowest mm -hmm. drying one. And again, the safflower oil was there because it was very, very pale. Right. So it doesn't affect these. Right. And make them exactly. yellow. Exactly. Okay. So that's key. Um, we've got linseed oil in this one. That's why it's called underpainting white. Mm -hmm. So Amy, if you wanted to have, or any of you out there wanted to make a painting, and you were going to work in a indirect style, right. You were going to use a white and a black, and you were going to make a, a what's called a grisaille painting, mm -hmm. all in grays. Right. And then paint with glazes over top. Underpainting white. This would white. be definitely what you'd want it, to use. It would yes. be the one you'd want to use in the, now, in the lower layers. Is that all titanium based or is it titanium and zinc? I'm just curious. Titanium about. and zinc, yeah. Okay. Good question because uh, titanium, uh, there's, there's combinations of titanium and zinc. Mm -hmm. um, it, and what that does is it changes the opacity mm -hmm. of the colors. Um, it also helps from uh, and to keep the paint more flexible Yes. Uh, as well. Um, flake white hue. So hue is not, this is always the thing, I, I feel like people think that hue means that something is... Um, substandard. Substandard. I mean, that's, that's what a lot yeah, of people substandard. think that means. It's I, just a replacement. It's a replacement. So flake white, genuine flake white has lead in it. And we've moved away from that. Amy, you like the lead? I, yeah. I, I grew up using a lot yeah. of lead as well. Um, there's a few things that come into play with, with, with stuff like that. Um, sometimes, and this is this is the case with lead, um, we, we did not have a supplier that we used to have right. that really gave us the right. best quality, and we found that what we were getting, what we were getting um, was, was not the quality that we expected. We've also made a move as a company to try to be more sustainable right. uh, in a lot of ways, and, and the people handling such pigments. Well, um, and cleanup take is, takes on a whole different thing absolutely. For, for, you know, being decoded and all yeah. that. So, so I, what I you'll find with flake white hue, uh, hue it will have the same stiffness that, mm. that the lead counterpart had. So if you like the traditional lead-based mm -hmm. flake white, flake white hue um, will do that. If you tell us a little bit more of a warm, I don't know if you guys can see mm -hmm. it there, it's hard, but a, a warmer, right. Right, a warmer color there as well. And then transparent white, which we were just using. Right. See just how, th this is where you can really tell um, how transparent that is. I think if we were looking at zinc white just on its own, we'd say, well, that's transparent. Right then when we really see what transparent white right. is doing here, highly transparent, and again, a slow drying rate um, that we have in there. So to me, our most popular, mm -hmm. uh, I, I probably acrylics, oils, right, yeah. the most popular yeah. thing, I, I would bet everybody out there has titanium white in their toolbox. Right. Um, so what I would really look at then uh, as a possibility is either a transparent white or a zinc white, right. depending on how transparent you want to go. Now I'm going to open the worm can Do about it. about zinc. There's always we get a lot of questions about it and that's yeah. why I'm sure that you guys were going to probably yeah, have had some ahead. questions too mm. uh, about zinc being more brittle, mm -hmm. it, it being where people are finding that it's cracking like years down there. And some mm. of that is just as easily explained as improper painting procedures mm -hmm. because they didn't realize how extremely brittle it was. But what what is Windsor Newton's current take on that? Because there's like, like uh, Williamsburg won't make it anymore now, yeah. and they've taken it out of all their stuff, which I think in some cases is, it's it's still not giving painters the option of something that they've used, mm -hmm. and it's not necessarily educating them as to why mm -hmm. either. Mm -hmm. So yeah, um, 
th that's a question that we get, and it's a question that's been posed to our lab, mm -hmm. and we go through tests, um, and those tests are kept on file, okay. and we have not found that to be the case awesome. with the zinc okay. that, that we use. Okay. Um, because these are questions we get all the time, and you guys can reach out to, uh, to us. I'm, right. when, I say, when I say us, when you reach out to Windsor and Newton, you're gonna get um, right. a person who works mm -hmm. for me. Uh, who will answer one of the questions um, that that sometimes comes to me, right. um, and then it goes to the lab as well. Um, so it's definitely a question that that mm -hmm. we've been uh, that's been posed mm -hmm. to us as well. We've not found that to be the case. Well, and you know, I've in just doing a little bit of research mm -hmm. on it, um, a lot of the ones I found that I've heard people have had a lot of cracking issues were also poppy seed oil based, which is slow drying and mm -hmm. it's a much more brittle oil. And not everybody's grind is the same on their zinc. It seems like it seems like it does vary a little yeah. in how it feels. Yeah, well, it, it, I, it makes. That seems I, like the I cost. theorize that might be even some of the issue where some people have problems with it, and mm -hmm. then some people don't. Yeah, it, it very well could be. Uh, the, the 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 beauty of having a, a, a lab um, that we've had people in that lab for a long, long time mm -hmm. um, is that there's a track record there. Right. So we go through light fastness tests. Whether you're buying the artist oil color or you're buying our Winton student grade mm -hmm. color, they're going through the same light fastness nice. tests. They're going through storage tests. Nice. Swatches are being made of the colors. And what happens for all you out there, there is a, a, a date, you're not gonna be able to see it on here. I, I don't think I'm so. Yeah, stamped on the crimp. But it, it's, it's stamped on the crimp. That date code will tell me the week and the year that was manufactured. Okay. And if we think that there is a problem, I can go to our lab, they can check, and then they can look at samples they nice. have, and they can okay. find out what's going That's on. Awesome. Um, so it's a nice way for us to cross-reference um, what goes okay. on. Cool. Yeah, very, very cool. Um, and then let's take a look at some blacks right here. Um, this is where I'm gonna, I'm gonna put some of this out, because this is where I'm gonna give you a, a little bit of, we'll put this, uh, this right over yeah, here. There you go put it right there. But I'm gonna put out, Perylene Black is this one up here. And you've, you've had this on the show before, I think, mm -hmm. and I wanna, I wanna show something here. Um, Perylene Black, obviously it looks black, right, as the name suggests. We're gonna take a white, yeah, pick any, I don't know, pick a white anyway, uh, it doesn't matter. Transparent? Sure, right there. transparent's yeah. fine. Yeah. We'll take transparent white, okay. and we're gonna see very, very clearly what is already dried over to the side. Yeah, this is just this is just blows my mind. But this is kind of like magic right here, yeah, I it's, think. It's sorcery. Witchcraft. Look at how gorgeous uh, that green. We use transparent white. Look at that. So it's a very deep, deep green. I'm gonna go, uh, I'm gonna use a bit more of it actually. Because okay. I want to bring out a little bit. This was done with titanium. Mm. Oh, bring, yeah. I want to bring out some more of the color. Yes, this is much softer. It is. There we go. I'm going to bring out some more of that. But what I like about this, Amy, is this is where I would play with color mixing if I was in the studio and had a little perylene black. Mm -hmm. Because I'd look at that and I'd say, mm -hmm. well, let's take a little bit of Windsor yellow. Um, let's take a little bit of, I don't know, let's take some cadmium lemon. Right, a cooler yellow. Yes. Let's take a little bit of transparent yellow. And let's let's actually take some burnt sienna as well. And if we have this, ooh, do I have enough? Ooh. Just have enough. Wow. Look at that gorgeous, you know, you, you, that you, you think of... That is a lovely green, yeah. You, you yeah. think of your blues and your yellows making the green, but the, the, the perylene is already a black that pushes so green. That's a gorgeous, gorgeous color right there. The and sad thing is the monitor doesn't pick it up as well as the color right on the... You can see it a little bit better than... Oh, okay. Well, that one you should be able to see. Oh, wow, yeah. I mean, look at that, look at it, look at it. You wouldn't think that that's no, striking no. green. Yeah, yeah. Right? How gorgeous is that? And and this is the this is what I'm talking about. Like it's 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 wonderful to take your primary colors and, 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 and make your mixes. But then just having a color like that in the palette, look at how wonderful this wide array. Now you're not gonna get what you're gonna have happen here. We've got the very red of mm -hmm. the of the burnt umber and we've got the green here. And 
we can knock that back. Yeah, it looks so pretty though. Mm, that's nice. Right. So, so again, if we want to have a, if we want to have more of almost what could fit in here, as a chromatic black, mm -hmm. right, or a Definitely. chromatic gray, and even if we take a little bit more color, or sorry, a little bit more white in this case, bring this out just a little bit more. Yeah, look at that. Almost get. So nice. I won't get too close. Yeah, no, it's, it's, it is very much a khaki almost. Right, yeah. almost a khaki in there, yeah. Very beautiful. And, and, and so in, in certain value oh, ranges, cool. yep. uh, you know, you, you get wonderful things that start to happen yeah. by exploring with something that you, you probably never would have had right, right, the right. thought to do. And to me, if, if you just sat in your studio and made little color choices like that, like you, you, know, you tried that, and Amy, if you'll tear that off for me. Mm -hmm. And the same kind of thing with uh, blue-black. Put blue-black down. And again, we'll take another white here. We'll take a uh, flake white hue this time. Clean that off. Right, gorgeous, gorgeous color. Mm -hmm. Let's go back to one of our primary colors here. Permanent rose. Oh, look at that! That's a that's a phenomenal color. Yeah, that is. I mean, that's a phenomenal, phenomenal color that you get out of there. So beautiful. Let that down even just a touch more. So making tints and shades of. Wow. I love that that a color like one of those blacks can do that. Mm -hmm. Your Mars black is, is really something that gives you a neutral bias. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't push the green or blue like perylene and, and blue black, obviously blue black, mm -hmm. which lets you know that right away. Lamp black, one of your oldest, right? So right, from lamps right. uh, and, and things like that going way back to, to our, our earliest paintings. Uh, a very, very dense black. Has a bit of a bluish bias. Um, but nowhere near as no, much as huh, blue huh. black, mm -mm. and then ivory black, sort of a brown biash uh, that that gets um, slow drying, semi transparent yeah, as well. Both of those, good to know. Slow mm -hmm. drying. Mm -hmm. Those are going to be on your your that farther end of the mm -hmm. spectrum, like seven days or yep. more. People will always paint the edges of their canvas like um, it last. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, if uh, I don't even know how many times I tell people always paint it first. Yeah, if and not always framing. paint it with the drying medium mm -hmm, mm -hmm. first. Because yes, then they'll do that, and it needs to be somewhere in two days, and they're calling and going. Absolutely. Oh, help me! What do I do? You know, um, so that, wipe, that, a, wipe that off. That's a that's a B, key don't thing. Don't do that again. And and you know when you're when we're using colors like this, I think it's where you 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 take the time to know what you're doing with the color, so that when right. you go to paint, half the battle, to me, is knowing what you're doing. Because if I make a portrait of you or a landscape or it right. doesn't matter what the subject is but let, let's just say a representational mm -hmm. subject for a moment I, I measure correctly I get my composition right, right. it looks like the thing yes. but in all other aspects but my color right isn't what I need it to be I, it, well, it's you, easy to fail because what you lack is the, the, the feeling of, of the, the image and you've taken all those years to learn drawing and the proper perspective and all that. That didn't happen overnight. Yeah. It's an acquired skill. Mm -hmm. Whether you have talent or not, it's an right. acquired skill. This is the same thing. Oh, oh absolutely. And this it's is just 100%. as important. And, and uh, this is where most people fail because they think that they can just open a pretty tube and they're going to get whatever the color they want magically. It's, it's putting in a little bit of study and some work, yeah, which is fun. For sure. Um, I, yeah, I, I would say about that too, that yeah, some people maybe tend to have a little bit more of a color sense, uh, yes. you, you know, just, oh, like, just like people have, a, have an ear for music. Yes. Yes. But it is definitely something that comes with study. And one of the things I used to say to my students is, 
if they were working on a painting, I said, I, I, I don't want you to worry about it looking like something. I want it to feel like something. Yeah. So if yeah, it was a like landscape that. and you were out there with rudimentary shapes and basic mm -hmm. uh, uh, proportions and composition, whatever a street scene, let's say, or a field or whatever, mm -hmm. it's going to look like that. Uh, it's going to uh, have that image that looks like a field or a street scene. But if that is taking place at dusk, right. at dawn, at a certain time of the year, right. those colors are going to uh, gonna, gonna get right. you there. Yeah, we've got another question. Um, I, we have a couple people on Facebook and YouTube asking how the blue-black compares to Cave Gray. Did you lighten it and tint with it? Yeah, oh, I wish we had a, that's great. I wish we had a Payne's Gray here, and I, and I do not have one here. Um, the blue-black, uh, oh, do you have one? Um, it's possible. Oh, people are off. That, that's where I'm going. Yeah, that's where I'm going. Wow. Just going to be whether I find the paint. Talk about a, 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 a question that you're digging down deep for. And it seems like a lot of our users are obsessed with the paint's gray. Yeah, paint's gray, um, I find, is a deeper uh, a deeper uh, color that you'll get at uh, rather than blue black. Uh, do we have one? Goodbye. All right, well, we're going to. Wow. Billy and Prussian blue, though. People are going to bat for you out there on this question. You are like out the there asking that Holy question, Grail. man. That was like, you got it. Luckily, the uh, tube came off. Ironically, easily. the, the top wizard came was off right easily. behind us. Um, so, two things. Let's take a look at. Uh, let's take a look at this here. Um, we've got both semi-transparent mm -hmm. uh, colors in this. Um, the we've got PV29, which is a pigment blue. Uh, it's uh, ultramarine. 29. This is ultramarine. Uh, ultramarine. Yep. Yeah and PBK19. If you're looking at a tube of paint, PB is pigment blue. When you see the K, PBK is pigment black. That's how you differentiate between those two. Um, and you've got PB29 mm -hmm. also in here, uh, but PBK9 um, with blue black. I'd have to look that one up, Amy, yeah, honestly. I was say, look at the, yeah, look uh, the back of the tube. And Payne's like gray, we're gonna put down here with flake white hue. Again, a one uh, to one. Nine is ivory. Ivory. Black. Ivory. So you're getting a little bit more of that brownish bias with that. Yeah, I don't know what 19 is up the uh, And you can see that that let down with, a, again, a one to one ratio. Mm -hmm. It's much more grayish uh, than it is actually blue. Yeah, it is. When you compare those two. So you almost, you know, if you were looking uh, isolated, I don't think you'd see that, but you can see you've got a stronger color with mm -hmm. blue black. And let's hold it up a little bit too in case. Uh, yeah. See if that makes any difference. Right. So something like that, I, I would say with the blue black, um, that you can let that down even more mm -hmm. and, and get closer to this. Mm -hmm. you know, you're getting a little bit more of that impact of the blue in there. Right. Subtle differences with those two. Payne's Gray is a gorgeous, gorgeous color, though, and uh, I do have that in a palette uh, when I go out for uh, landscape painting. Mm -hmm. uh, I'll either I'll use either or um, because you can get some gorgeous things. And again, let's let's take some of some of that here, um, mix in there, and you can see how like shadows. Oh yeah. Definitely. Right, shadows in a street scene or something like that. Yes. Across a road. Mm -hmm. Gorgeous, gorgeous mm. color right there. Um, yeah, so that's your comparison there. A little bit stronger on the blue bias with the yes. blue black. That's why yeah, it pushes this is that way. Uh, warmer to me. Yeah, looking. yeah, and and that, and that's the ivory in there is doing that. Mm. That's that that's that brownish bias right there, uh, which is taking place. So you know, I I think also just like the whites, would you, would you have all these in the No, absolutely, you wouldn't have all those in your palette. And there's people there's people out there who are going to advocate uh, uh, color mixing and making your own black. Um, I, and I absolutely did that when I was teaching mm -hmm. um, basic painting. I, I'd teach uh, six colors. I'd go, I'd go with what's called a split primary palette. Mm -hmm. So I'd use a warm, cool red, mm -hmm. warm, cool yellow, mm -hmm. warm, cool blue. Mm -hmm. um, and if you go to the Winsor & Newton site under Discover, I think the tab is, you can go to oil paint, 
and you can see what we suggest again the permanent rose windsor lemon and windsor blue red shade mm -hmm. you can also see a six color palette you can see a 12 color palette oh nice you can see that for student grade which is the winton range mm -hmm. of paint you can see that for artist oil color as well and i think that's I, i've had interns come in and work for us before and they see our whole entire display of paint and they almost lose their mind oh, yeah. and they're like, oh my gosh, I would love to have all hundred colors. And I say, I would never give you all hundred colors of those because it, it, it would be too much to handle. Right. You would never learn to mix because you'd grab everything right. out of the tube right, right. and you'd miss the subtleties. Right. You know, that or, is, or if you even, even by chance yeah. started learning to mix some of those, because you've got so much going on, you're never going to remember what was what. Unless oh my gosh, no. Writing it down constantly, no. which nobody does. No, that. and it would be redundant. Okay. Quite frankly, yes. out of a, out of a 119 colors in, in this range, let's say, there's no number of them you're never going to use right. because it's not your sensibility as an artist. Right. Certain colors you just don't gravitate right, towards right, right. in your palette. Um, but that that's my strong suggestion to you guys is is again take a look know what the primaries are in in the range of paints that you're using um, and and again check out on the Windsor site what the 6 and 12 color palette is but that'll put you in a position to experiment to learn about color through that experimentation mm -hmm. take the time in the studio to do that know which white's gonna work best for right. you know which black's gonna work best for you know which drying oil is gonna mm -hmm. work best with you and again uh, if we if we kind of recap going back to the beginning, that's going to be about your drying rate. Yep. It's going to be about the color mm -hmm. of the drying oil itself. It's going to be about the viscosity. Mm -hmm. And that's something that it you know I think drying rate, Amy, is something that's very specific to what you're doing as a as a project. Right. Um, but the viscosity is something that has to do with your temperament as an artist. Right. And and the Definitely. feel. Um, it's no different than I don't like. I tend to not like foods that are really mushy. It's a texture yeah, I don't yeah, yeah. like. So yeah. when I said I don't like uh, guacamole, and people lose their minds, like yeah, it's not the flavor. It's the no. texture is gross. Yes, I question. <laughs> I, you don't oh, either. No, I, lost my mind. I, 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 I yeah, thought, yeah. I thought no, it was I, a, I, I was yeah. a little, but I've got a yeah. sensory thing too. So it's not guacamole, but it's other no, things. No, pe people look at me like, like I like I hate kittens wrong. and puppies when yeah, I, say I, know. I don't like guacamole. But but it's a it's a it's a texture thing, <laughs> right, and there's right. certain ways and I it's, paint. This is the same the there's same a, way. Right, there's yep. a feel that I like, and and that is akin to the way that I work, which right. is different possibly than the way uh, you work. So that's a very important thing to, right. to keep in mind as well. Um, and I would say that those are, uh, those are your important things to note. And, and again, note what we were talking about before as we recap here. Pay attention, I go this way, mm -hmm. pay attention to what you're using in terms of colors. Right. Um, you, you mentioned quinacridone colors, which are in the permanent rose mm -hmm. here. Again, high key, right. transparent. Right. Uh, and you will see transparent colors in our primary ranges because mm -hmm. they make clean mixes. Yes, You'll also do. notice uh, that unlike the, let's say the blue black or the Payne's gray that has multiple pigments, single pigments. Right. Right. And the single right. pigments mean that if you had two pigments here, two here, two here, and we mix them all together, now got six. Right. And which, which we've talked about with the pigment and episode in the student and versus professional grade. We talked about the more stuff you've got optically, the more it will start muddying up. Yeah, and and, the, and I think the best way I can explain that is, you know, you you, ha you have the idea of all these colors, right, seen mm -hmm. through a prism, and you get white light. Right. That's theory. Take all those colors on the palette, mix them together, and you've got mud. And you might get yeah. some good mud out of it, but right. you're but you're not getting some of the mixes that right. you that it's you, not clear bright right color that, that you'd necessarily mm -hmm. want to get. Um, so that's that's very important and. Finally, let's let's just let's take a look at this last one here. Um, this is all Mars black, with two parts titanium white to one part so Mars black. A little bit this way. A little bit that way. There we go. There we go. Um, so you can see there again all Mars black. Look what happens. Titanium white really mm -hmm. knocks that Mars black. Zinc white because well, it's semi-transparent. Barely. Semi -transparent, yeah, barely. Does anything. Uh, flake white hue, sort of in the middle. Mm -hmm. Underpainting white, we pull out more of a uh, of a bluish mm -hmm. gray to it a little bit, huh, um, and transparent white is is the the darkest one of mm -hmm. those as well. Um, but what you'll also notice, Amy, these are straight out of the tube too. These are just done a little right. while ago, without a drying oil. Notice what happens here. Yeah, look at that. See, you're seeing some some areas are a little bit more glossy. Right. Some that are a little bit more thin here, mm -hmm. J just from dragging it out on right. on the surface. Right. Uh, is a little bit more dull. Mm -hmm. There's been there's no medium. 
There's right. nothing that's been added uh, to it. So the thinner that I get with that, uh, the less sheen right. uh, that you're seeing there. And right, you're seeing more pigment as yeah. opposed to the drying oil. Do we have another minute or two? Yeah. We do? Yeah. We're good? Okay, cool, because I'm going to show you. Uh, let's go back. Yeah, let's go back here. Uh, let's go. Let's. You want me to let's move? let's end where we started. Yeah, let's okay. give us give us one more page off of there, Amy. Because in the traditional drying oil category, um, these are ready to go. Yes. Okay. So this one is artist painting medium. Mm -hmm. This is sand oil mm -hmm. and solvent, sand right. in this case. So this is a one to one mixture. This is ready to go. Um, so if you're going out and you're doing a painting session and you don't want to mess with your ratio. Right. Or if you just want that ha that thinking process to be not something you have to deal with. Yes. It's ready to go. Right. And you can see the difference there when you thin that. Yeah. Right. Look, look how much yeah, definitely. clearer yes, it, mm -hmm. right, that looks than, than the uh, stand mm -hmm. oil. Now also, we recommend artist painting medium when you want to oil out. So this is what reminded me of it right here. Sometimes what happens is you might get some dull areas in your oil painting. There's a number of reasons that could happen. You used too much solvent mm -hmm. when you were painting. So I think of uh, what's called oiling out is we're putting oil back into right. the paint film. Now, I'm going to take a, a paper towel. This is, I would take a lint-free rag if I was right. going to do this, Amy, because right. I don't want... Yeah, exactly. The right. deposits of... Yeah, you get a nice lint-free rag. But you take some artist painting medium and what you do is you gently rub that back into it. So what you're doing is adding a little bit of fat in those drier areas that'll Absolutely. absorb that, and then the solvent will kind of help it dry quicker. Yep, solvent's gonna evaporate right. off, and I'm bringing oil back into it. So no different than if my hands are dry, right. and I'm adding a moisture. Right. I think of it almost as a moisturizer yeah, yeah. for your painting. Yeah. But, but generally speaking, um, oiling out that adding the oil back into it again is is because something else is going on right again you usually you possibly used too much solvent or possibly if you primed your own canvas and you didn't do a great job mm -hmm. of it and it's too absorbent yes a lot of the oil is yes soaks right it, it's soaking right. in there and some people will say well why not just add a varnish but what happens is we're not adding that oil back in right. there and then you're, you're still going to yes, have different gonna, levels. Yep. Um, so just, you know, and you don't need a lot, just a little, but you're just gently rubbing in there. Well, people will, also, will say that too, that, you know, they'll have really high areas of gloss and then areas that are matte. And oiling right. out helps kind of more even that playing surface, mm -hmm. especially if you, you're working with a lot of gray values. Yeah. Where they're very close, but the color is just slightly different. Yeah. And they're matte. It's really hard to see what's what, and it's yes, oh, yeah, yeah, very much, very much to so. get that sheen that kind of helps you realize, oh, maybe your painting's further along than you think. Yes, yes. Or it's not, but it kind of it's hard to tell. You correct. Know? Yeah, correct, it, correct. It seems like, um, and this works so much better than just using, uh, you know, a retouch varnish. People a lot of times will use a retouch yeah. varnish to try to do that, but that's, yes. it's so light. It's it's yeah, and, and the retouch varnish really is a, is a, is a more diluted picture varnish, yes. um, which is there for intermediate protection. Right. Um, this is blending and glazing medium. So blending and glazing medium is what you would call a traditional 214 okay. painting medium, right? So in that case, and I'm going to pour a little bit out here, we've got... See, look how look how yeah. runny that is. Yeah. So um, in that case, the two one four is our uh, our oil, mm -hmm. uh, our varnish, and our solvent. Okay. So it's two parts oil, mm -hmm. one part uh, varnish, which in this case it's Mar varnish, mm -hmm. and then uh, four parts solvent. So that's why it's uh, it's quite yes. runny like that. It's very very pale. I was gonna say it's 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 harder to tell on the monitor, but this has just got a slight S tint to slight, it. Slight, just where slight. Where this is more water clear. Yeah. Um, yeah, and you can actually see how those two um, kind of do what we did before. Just how yeah, those run. Wow. Look, look at look at how yeah. that that really that runs awesome down the quick. surface a lot, right? So blending and glazing medium, right? Mm -hmm. Anything that's going to move like that, it has very um, uh, a very quick movement to it, right? Uh, right. The viscosity um, is really able to brush out, so you can blend very right. easily. 
And you can make laces of color very, very easily with that. But that's also going to dry much quicker, too, because absolutely. it's faster. Absolutely. Right? Absolutely. It's a leaner mixture, yep. too. This and, and if you think about stand oil, when we first put yeah. that out, how thick that yeah, was, yeah. the one-to-one -one still uh, obviously makes yes. it much thinner, but it, it doesn't yes. race across no, the surface no. mm -hmm. like this. So once again, uh, these are ready to go as is mm -hmm. um, out of the jar. So don't even have to think about that. Right. Um, and, and I think the more that you learn about drying oils, the more you come up with recipes that might work for you. So mm -hmm. for instance, after many, many years, I used to like to make my oil paintings more matte. Mm -hmm. So what I used to do is I used to take beeswax, uh, what we call cold wax, mm -hmm. you'll, you'll see it sometimes. I would take a tablespoon of cold wax. I would put that in a jar with five parts solvent and let that dissolve. Mm, okay. And then the, the wax made a matting agent. Right. And then I would add that to my linseed oil. Nice. Right. So the, so the, so I would have again this this jar that was five part solvent, one part uh, cold wax, mm -hmm. and that was that was off to the side. That's my right, matting right, right. agent. And then over here in my little cup for painting, I'd put two to three parts of that to one part linseed oil, mm -hmm. and it would give a much more matte finish to my nice. oil paint because that's not what you have with oil right. paint. You tend to get a you get a glossy right a glossy right feel. right. And the reason I did that, I, it was much easier for me to shoot photographs yes, for work. Yes, definitely. And then later on with a picture varnish, if I wanted, it, it, a lot of those things I was doing just tended to, I wanted them to be more matte, mm -hmm. and I could use a matte varnish, but I could also use a gloss one. Right. Uh, if I wanted to bring that uh, up a bit. So you, you, you kind of figure out those ratios mm -hmm. along the way, um, but you don't want to push the extreme either right. way. Um, that's what oil paint does not love. No. It doesn't love extremes. Yes. Um, one of our viewers brought up the salt effect for watercolors. Mm. Is there anything that you can use with oils to get a similar effect? Oh, so for anybody out there who doesn't, this is not for me that the, the salt effect, so when you're using watercolors, uh, obviously you know in the winter time you throw salt mm -hmm. down, right? Salt does what? It pulls the moisture mm -hmm. out and it leaves this sort of speckled effect um, with your watercolor. Um, that's a good question, and I, I honestly, I don't have the answer. You stumped me. I don't have an answer to that one. I would have to actually check with some of my colleagues and see if they've experimented with something like that. Um, I don't know anything offhand. I do know that um, if I used a much more of a dry brush technique uh, or scumbling, right? Yes. Scumbling is when we use a much more of a dry brush right. and we're dragging across the surface. Um, you'll get areas that, that pick up the high points mm -hmm. of the canvas uh, and leave the low points, which can have maybe somewhat of a similar right. effect to that, um, but not the effect in which the salt just right. sucks up the moisture. Because that's because that's only water and, and pigment, so mm -hmm. it's going to pull it very differently. Yeah. And where this, you don't want to be adding salts and things like that, no. and can do horrible things. No, to no, your... no, no, no. Yeah, you want and you want to keep things pretty simple. Um, th that's the thing with your mediums too. You know, you d you don't want to be saying, "Well, I'm going to add some sand oil and then right. some poppy oil, and I'm going to drop right. a little liquid yes. in there, and then I'm going to add some varnish, and yes. then I'm going to add." You don't need to get crazy. It's uh, I think almost everything that well, almost everything I, th I think everything that we do really with art is very much like cooking in the respect. Use some quality materials. Mm -hmm. Yes. Keep it simple, mm -hmm. and you you get good results. Um, oh yeah. And yeah. and when you when you start to do things where your drying rates are polar opposite, um, th then that's where you start you to mess with things. asking for trouble. Yeah. So so you know you go you go back to how we started this, and, and you've got your. Your fat over lean is the thick over thin. It's the it's the fast or uh, slow drying over faster drying. Mm -hmm. uh, it's knowing those ratios and keeping that pretty simple. Um, and then and also don't don't get too nuts about it either. Um, I find that people get so crazy about um, perfect ratios. Right. You know, I, like I said, a, a five to one uh, a solvent to the stand oil. Mm -hmm. get, you, you can you can. Yeah, if it's off a little, it's not nobody. No, you, nope. you, you don't There's have to have no mixing painting. cups here and, right. and do that. You, right. you can approximate um, and you will right. be okay in that process. Right. Um, it'll work for you and it'll, it'll, it'll be good. Um, so, yeah. Well, this was fantastic. Cool. And I'm sure that they had a good time, didn't they? They probably oh, were. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Jimmy breaks it down so everybody can understand it. And it's, and it's much, I mean, demystify it. Oh, good, good, completely. good. Completely. Yeah, so this is, this is fantastic. You know, again, really again you can reach it. out to us. Um, that's, that's one of the things that uh, we, when you reach out to us and um, we like to have somebody live who answers questions. Um, if we don't know the answers, then we go to the lab. 
Um, nice. We try to find answers for you, uh, or we try to dig into our technical library and do that as well. Um, but uh, I think the key thing is just get in your studio, um, mix around, play around, know what you're trying to do at the outset, mm -hmm. um, and have some fun with it. Awesome. Well, thank cool. you. You're Again. welcome. And thank you guys for watching. Uh, next week will be JL80. Oh, also, if you wanted to see, oh, uh, G, this is JL80. If you wanted to see any of the items, that's I was thinking two things and <laughs> trying to blend them both together, that we that Jimmy used here today, any of the colors that you saw, mm. maybe you're attracted to. You have to have purulene black now mm, after true. seeing that. Transparent white, yes. that's a good one. Uh, go to our website, type in the search bar JL80. That will pull up the whole list of all the items we used here today. Uh, <laughs> that's great. <laughs> Yeah, so All many right. things too much of it. Yeah, yeah, that's okay. <laughs> that's okay. You you deserve your own code. Uh, well, thank you, everybody. <laughs> we appreciate you guys tuning in. Yeah. We'll see you next week. Bye. <laughs> I really did. <laughs> but, but I didn't.